Hey everybody, welcome to the Gym Masters Show Live. How are all of you? It is so nice to see your smiley faces. I can see all of you. Did you know that? Some of you are dressed to the nines or all dressed up. Some of you are sort of semi-casual, while others of you might even be in your pajamas. Those here in the United States might still be in their pajamas because it's the weekend and it's 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Those of you watching in Europe and Greece, it is the evening. So we say good evening and welcome. I'm your host, Jim Masters, and this is the Jim Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. We've been doing this series uh, for many, 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 many months now, since about April of last year, and we've done about 235 live episodes with extraordinary guests from all walks of life, fields of endeavor, and levels of success in music and television and film, Broadway, Hollywood, science, nature, health and wellness, culinary arts, sports, comedy, uh, inspiring guests, authors, and so much more. This show is patterned after the traditional talk shows of uh, yesteryear, where they spent time with the guests and with the viewers, and they welcomed the viewers in. And that's what I do. It's a very interactive international uh, talk show series that uh, brings light, love, and levity to bear. And what I think is great about that is uh, it's inspiring, it's positive. Our viewers call themselves the Lovities. They call me Mr. Lovity. They call this our home studio, Lovity Hall. And the reason why is back in the summertime, I said our show is about light, love, and levity just a little too fast. And I said Lovity. And then everybody fell in love with the word Lovity. So the viewers call themselves the Lovities. Uh, all of our guests are welcomed into the show as Lovities. And we just have a really good time. We're bringing back the lost art of conversation with entertainment and so much more. So it's really cool to have you. Uh, we broadcast this show live out of the uh, northeastern United States along the East Coast in the greater New York area between New York and Boston along the southern New England coast, uh, literally right on the ocean. That's where we're positioned. And we have uh, countless viewers who watch our series live. You can also watch this on demand. So if you miss anything today or you want to share this with somebody who you know would love this episode but isn't watching, you can share it because uh, all of our episodes are archived on our YouTube channel, which is Gym Masters TV. And everybody that's watching on the YouTube channel, we invite you to subscribe to the channel. We would absolutely love that. Um, and be sure and click the notification bell so you don't miss any of the incredible conversations and entertainment and everything we have here on the show. Last week, we had Mario Frangoulis here. And if you missed that episode, dear friend, I've known him for years, interviewed him uh, many moons ago on public television. We've all stayed in touch. Uh, you can see that episode on uh, Gym Masters TV on the YouTube channel and countless guests from all walks of life. Uh, I do this work professionally in the real world as a television and radio personality and host, presenter, voiceover artist, stage MC, journalist, actor, writer, producer. And it's a pleasure to present this show to everybody worldwide uh, every single day. Our regular hours are 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. We're doing a special time today because my very special guest is uh, internationally beloved, the wonderful George Paris. He is here, renowned uh, Greek and French singer, uh, recording artist, songwriter, and so much more. And George and I are personal friends. We've also known each other. We have a little clique of friends, myself, George, Mario, others. Uh, we've stayed in touch and have uh, supported each other and rooted for each other in our respective uh, careers. And I think that's wonderful. I welcome you and you and you and you and you. We have some wonderful coffee today. This is in the Pine Island, Florida mug that one of our lovely viewers sent my way, Mary Bishop. And we thank Mary for doing that. Hmm. So we toast to all of you and let's check in quickly with some of our uh, international uh, viewers. Again, we have viewers in the United States, Canada, Mexico, South America, as well as Australia, New Zealand, Asia, and Europe. And we welcome everybody to the Gym Masters show live today for this Saturday. Again, you can see this show also archived on demand on Gym Masters TV on YouTube. Don't forget to follow me on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Periscope, and Twitch, all at Gym Masters TV. Uh, Mary Bishop, who sent me that mug, she's watching, she's here. She says, hello, Jim and lovely friends. Welcome to the show, George. 
working, so not commenting, but I will be listening. That is perfect. Good to see you in Florida, USA, over in Holland, in the Netherlands. Wonderful Willie is here. Hello, Jim and Lovities. Enjoy the show. Thank you, Willie. It's wonderful having you here. Christos is here. Welcome, Christos. Welcome to the show. Diane is here as well. Greetings. Nice to see you as well. We welcome you. Nice to have you on the show. And hello to you as well. Nice to have you watching from Greece. You as well. Hello, Jim and friends. Looking forward to hearing from George. Gina here. Good to see you, Gina, and welcome. Suzette is watching once again from Portugal. Good evening from Portugal, Jim, and all the Lovities. Welcome, George, to Lovity Hall. I already told him about Lovity, Lovity Hall. He's going to be welcomed as a Lovity. And like all the guests, he said, bring it on. I love it. Christos says, hello, everyone. Great to see you all. You as well, Christos. Nice to have you here. Gary Troyer watching from Iowa, USA. Hi, Mr. Jim, Mr. Levity and the Levities. <laughs> Good to see you, Gary, as well. And hello, everyone from Maria. Kathy Short in Cleveland, Ohio says, uh, happy Saturday, Jim and our Levity family. You got it, my friend. You're here every single episode of our show. We're also going to be here tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, with an, another extraordinary guest, John Prue, Grammy-winning composer, pianist, musician, He's going to be here. He's going to play live for us as well. Nice. Hello there, Jim, Suzette, and everyone from Christos. Stella is here. I love it. Welcome. Leslie Cummings is here. Good to see you, Leslie, as well. Maria's here. And Jennifer Barry in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Hello, Jim, George, and Lovities. Jen is Zen. Bernadette is here. Hi, Jim. And hey, fellow Lovities. Good to see you. Bernadette, one of our regular viewers as well. I love that everybody also says hello to each other. We've created a wonderful, warm community all around the world of our Levity viewers. Welcome again, everyone from Suzette. Nice. I love that. Keep those comments coming. You can comment live during the show, whatever you'd like to do. I've got a lot of great, beautiful comments coming in here. Greetings from Greece, from Maria. Absolutely. Cheers from uh, wonderful Merlin in Ontario, Canada, one of our regular viewers. Rini Katz from New York City is here. Good to see you as well, Rini. Welcome. Jennifer Barry says, Jim, I love your blue shirt. I'm wearing dark blue PJs and my 1990 prom dress was midnight blue. You know what's cool about this shirt, gang? It's also soft. It's like a velvet. Do you want to reach in and touch it? Go ahead. <laughs> don't you wish you can it's like a soft velvet it's it's just it's like a glove i don't know it just fits so beautifully uh hi jim and lovely friends welcome singer george to the show today yes george paris we're ready for a great conversation of music at lovely hall nice to have you here as well and hearts from maria let me uh, tell you about my dear friend and our wonderful guest joining us here on the show. I'm sure you're very familiar with his work. If you're not, you're going to fall in love with him. He's uh, a real talent. Uh, he's a great guy. And um, he just loves performing for people. Here's a cool shot. Look at that one. <laughs> I am George. Uh, that's just one of the shots of many that we have to show you here. That's a really, really cool one. Let me tell you a little bit about him. Uh, again, he and I have been friends for a long time. He's Greece's leading international singer of his generation. He's a multilingual <clears throat> uh, singer, released albums in Greek, English, and French, an accomplished artist who went from regional stardom to international fame. George spent his formative years in his native Greece before uh, reaching international audiences. He's of Greek and French heritage. At a very early age, uh, George decided he wanted to become a singer and began studying voice and piano while pursuing his studies in Greek literature at the University of Athens. Matter of fact, he's live from Athens, Greece right now as we speak. Shortly thereafter, his first Greek album was released by EMI, and then he went on to release two more Greek albums with Sony Music and Heaven Music, and a French album in Canada with Select Records. He has performed at some of the most prestigious concert halls around the world, including Lincoln Center in New York and Symphony Hall in Boston and La Zenith, Paris, and he's performed in Montreal and also the Atticus Theater, Athens, and, and Istanbul, and so much more. He's collaborated and done so beautifully with acclaimed international artists like the extraordinary Michelle Legrand, Lara Fabian, who's wonderful. I interviewed her uh, several years ago on public television, Tina Arena, of course, Mario Frangoulis, our mutual friend, Justin Hayward, and others. And um, in addition to all of that, he also had a public television special 
His first, George Paris Live from Jazz at Lincoln Center, which was filmed live in New York, uh, had a very successful broadcast reaching more than 136 million viewers in the USA on public television. He went on to perform his picture this tour more than 30 cities uh, throughout 2015, 2016, including New York, Athens, Montreal, Sydney, Melbourne, Bangkok, Istanbul, and much, much more. Istanbul and uh, he also had the honor to perform the American National Anthem at the legendary Madison Square Garden uh, for the New York Knicks and also a Rangers game as well. He's released an album of duets in Greek with Mario Frangoulis, which garnered him immediate success, selling 68,000 copies and skyrocketing rocketing to number three on the Greek album charts. And his accolades and his experience go on and on and on. In June 2020, he released his first album of original songs, Greek songs, in more than 10 years as well. We're going to talk about, um, you know, also the Horatio Alger Association, which Mario talked about last week, is near and dear to George's heart as well. And we're going to talk about that and so much more as we welcome, live and direct from Athens, my dear friend, George Paris. George, how are you? Welcome, and it's good to see Jim, you, my friend. <laughs> nice to see you, my friend. Hi, everyone. Hi, hi, hi. Hey, hey, you got your mug there, so let's toast as we welcome yeah. you. And what do you have Cheers. in there? Some coffee or water or tea? Uh, I don't drink coffee. I only drink tea. Mm. So there's some great um, Earl Grey tea. And Very if nice. you hear a little bit of noise, it's because I'm by the fireplace. I put on a fire so that we can all be cozy all together. I wish I could show you, um, but well, you can hear the sound. <laughs> yes. Nice and snug and toasty with his tea and his fire. I love it, my friend. So you and, and I- As you can see, I'm super casual because we're on lockdown here. So yeah. Yeah, I thought, I, you know, I, since we're doing this between us, we'll yeah. keep it, you know, friendly and intimate. This is amongst friends, right? Exactly. No, no suit and tie uh, required. Just relax. And I want to show you some of the. Now you're all informed on the whole Lovity situation. Yeah. Here, all the Lovity, and you've watched the show too. You've watched episodes. You watched Mario last yes. week, and thanks for the nice comments. I'm glad you enjoy the the vibe and what we're doing here on the Gym Masters Show Live because you and I you know, have known each other for a long time and you've seen me do my thing professionally uh, on television and radio. So it's a, it's a pleasure to have you here, my friend. How have you been? It's a pleasure for me to be here and thank you for inviting me. And I hope we get together again and we break bread and uh, it's been we a while. Will. We it's will been. for sure. We got some great levity coming in. I want to show you, my friend. Welcome, George. Nice to have you here today from Kathy Short in Cleveland. Bernadette says, Slancha, Jim, and George. That's the Irish toast. Maria says, George. Kathleen oh, Walker. I can see some very special people. They some really of these are. Fans, they're fans I really love, and they've been following me for many, many, many years. So Do you have a name I'm, I'm for them? Happy. Like some people have a nickname. Like our viewers have become the Lovities. So I think uh, what was what is Mario's? The Frangulistas or something? That somebody everybody has like sort of. Uh, are yours the Georgies? No, we, <laughs> no, we don't have that. But what we do have is, especially with my non-Greek fans, um, because I always post the word philakia at the end of a post, which means kisses in Greek. Uh, they all send it, um, send it between them. So we have that. Perfect. <laughs> so that is, they are merging with our loveties, and that's fantastic. We're merging all of these fabulous people together, my friend, and that's a beautiful thing when you get an opportunity to do that. Kathy Short, one of our regular lovely viewers in Cleveland, uh, Ohio. Welcome, George. Nice to have you here today. Leslie Cummings. Nice to see you guys. She says, welcome, George, and Wozniak, wonderful person. Welcome, George, from a sunny but cool Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, you're lucky. It's all gray here today in Greece and rainy and very cold. I know her version of, of cool versus what we have and you have <laughs> is probably a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, like the 75 would be cool in Florida. Um, Bernadette says, welcome, George, to Lovety Hall. We love your voice. Gina says, uh, so good to see you here, George, from uh, Gina, which is beautiful. And uh, Maria, she's a dear friend. Uh, she's followed me for years. She follows you. She said, George and Kathleen. And uh, Maria says, hello, George. We miss you. That's beautiful. Oh, I miss you too. Gary in uh, Iowa, he's a regular fan of ours. And uh, he says, hi, George, from Gary Troyer in Iowa. Hope to see you in concert in Chicago when we're able to travel again. Oh, beautiful. My Diane. last concert in Chicago was 
five years ago. It's been five years, so I have to come back. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> Isn't it? You got to try some more of their famous deep dish pizza too, right? <laughs> Diane. I so did you. last time. I really did. Did you, did you like it? You got to watch. You don't want to. You don't want to be honest, weight. right? You don't want to uh, gain weight. Nah. You know. Ah, <laughs> uh, don't get me started. Food. Uh, me and food. It's a love and hate relationship. Well, it's mostly a love relationship. And then I just hate myself for having eaten all of that stuff that I've eaten. So. <laughs> well, you know, with the, with the whole one. Well, with the whole COVID thing, there the story is you have to be, we unfortunately, my friend, we have to be six feet away from one another, but yeah. we ha we're supposed to be also 10 feet away from our refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So more the like two miles away. Two working. miles away. <laughs> uh, Diane says, hi, George. And uh, Magdalene says, George. And uh, Suzette watching in Portugal says, hello, George, and welcome. Um, and Idol George, that's from Aww. Maria. Yeah, and uh, Kathleen is saying hello, and uh, Bernadette is saying hello. It's just nice to see uh, everybody here on the show and uh, so welcome. Cool. It's so warm. It really is. Uh, Jennifer Barry in uh, Pennsylvania, USA. Jim and George. My daddy was stationed in Athens, Greece when he was a mechanic on the C-5 cargo plane, United States Air Force. So wow. Beautiful. It's got a wonderful connection there. Awesome. And greetings as well. More greetings coming in. Oh, it's a beautiful town here in Greece. Yeah, you know, Where is that located for people that aren't familiar? How far from Athens? Uh, it's about a two hour drive from Athens, I think. It's in the Peloponnese. Uh, you know, actually it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was one of the first capitals of Greece, way long ago. Mm, good to know. See, you're gonna learn something on this show, gang, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Willie, who's in Holland, uh, one of our regular viewers, welcome, uh, George, uh, and welcoming it's you. Snowing. Snowing yeah. in Holland. Uh, we love you, George. Can't wait until you come back to the U.S. Katerina. Oh, that's my Katerina. Oh. Welcome, Katerina, to the YouTube show. Uh, and nice to have you here. George, we have snow in Paris. Christos is saying. Wow, that's Christian. Oh, from, you know, it, it's actually snowing here tonight in Athens. Is it really? It's the first, yeah, it's the first time in, I think, I don't know how many years, but it's going to snow tonight. So wow. we're all happy and excited. I was telling you on uh, one of the television shows that I host, the Lifestyle Travel TV series, I was in Greece, but I was on Samothraki Island, which was yeah. absolutely beautiful. We There were some folks that were here in the States and they own a, actually a pizza restaurant and they invited us to come and we went and we um, we stayed in one of the you know little hotels, which was beautiful on the water, but we followed them along the whole time. Uh, they have a little restaurant there on the island and you know we spent the time with the family learning about their life and their restaurant and people couldn't have been more friendly and the food. I mean, we were out in the ocean, the North Aegean sea there, you could see Turkey seven miles away and we're in, we're in the water swimming and then they're fishing and what they were fishing for, we were eating that night that they were cooking up and the, the table was filled with food and uh, the, uh, uh, the father, that's Greece. That's Greece. The father started <laughs> playing the bazooki, which was really wonderful. And everybody was singing at the table. It was just really, and Samothraki, really rugged. We did a lot of hiking and all kinds yeah. of, uh, it was a rugged, but very pristine island and, and really beautiful. Um, it is a beautiful island. I've only went, I've only gone there for, for one day. I did one of my first shows in Samothraki when it was, I think 19 years old or 18, I can't remember. Um, and I only stayed there for one day, but it, it's a beautiful, beautiful life. Isn't it? Isn't it? So uh, where did you grow up for our audience who might not be aware um, in Athens? I grew up here in Athens, yeah. yeah. My mom is French and my father is Greek, um, but I was born and raised here in Athens. I went to a Greek school, um, to a public school. And um, I used to go to France, you know, every year for holidays and stuff like that. But I, I grew up in Greece. And now your mother's a, a writer as well, too, isn't mm -hmm. she? Or a novelist? Too? Yeah. yeah, she's yeah. A very well known. She has become in, in the last few years. Um, when I was growing up, she was a French teacher. She, she owned her own um, uh, language school and she taught French to, to young kids. Um, and then when I was in my 
uh, 20, no, actually when I was a teenager, around 15 or 16, she published her first book and, and then she stopped teaching and uh, devoted herself to writing. Early on for you, my friend, um, what were some of those early sources of inspiration uh, when you were this cute kid here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's yeah. my favorite childhood photo. I love that photo. Yes, everybody um, watching, yeah, that is George. Patrick, How old are you there, George? I'm four years old. Four. That was actually the day that I announced to my mother that I was going to be a singer. Um, it was taken on that day when I told her, I was actually very pissed off when they took the photo and I told her, you know what, one day I'm going to be a singer. And the answer was, all right, well now you should just go and tidy up your room and then we'll talk about that. Um, <laughs> so you have a brooding look there, which actually works. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I was saying that you know, you and I, because uh, my background, my father's side is English and Irish, and my mother's side is English, Swedish, and mm -hmm. French. I think you and I could have been cousins. <laughs> that's me. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we could have been cousins, or we got the same haircut, too, you and I. Uh, we, so we, cute. we had that style, you and I, way before Justin Bieber ever did. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was the 80s. I mean, everybody had that. You had to have it in the 80s. It was mandatory. Uh, there you go. So had you always taken an interest in music? Uh, some of those early inspirations for you uh, musically. And did you have an instrument placed in your hand? Or what was the, the, the thrust of your kicking things off, especially, uh, you know, as a child having an interest in music and taking things from there, George? Well, it was always um, singing for me. That's what did it to me. I always felt my body alive through a melody. I, I felt the need to express myself through singing. And um, because at that time when I was four years old, my parents divorced and it was a very brutal, mm -hmm. very violent divorce that left me with many, many scars. And the only way um, I could escape from the madness in the house was to listen to music or sing. Um, so my first um, inspiration and the woman who became my, my idol and the, the reason why I became a singer was Greek singer Nana Muskuri. I don't know if you know Nana, but... Um, yes, I interviewed Nana her years ago uh, on PBS. And she, oh, you did? Yeah, I couldn't believe oh, it. Wonderful. She and Mario mentioned her last week too as well. She was so soft-spoken and elegant and regal and she has sold millions and millions and millions she of albums more than 340 million records which is it's okay i mean she did well in her life i guess yes <laughs> yes she did so how were you guys brought together it's very funny because i only actually met her um five years ago they mm. were filming a, a documentary on on her life and the French TV host, who um, is a friend of mine, called me up and um, he said, hey, I'm in Greece, what are you doing? I said, you know what, I'm I'm really busy right now. I, I have tons of things to do, can we meet tomorrow? And he goes to me, well, I'm actually you know, sitting with Nana and she wants to meet you, so do you think you could? And before he had even finished his sentence, I was like, I'm on my way. <laughs> um, I'll be right there. <laughs> so I literally flew off. Um, uh, across the other uh, end of the city, and um, I spent many, many hours with her. She was extremely gracious. She gave me incredible advice. Um, she spent the afternoon talking to me, um, you know, about her previous experiences. I, I told her some of my fears, my anxieties, and she really, really helped me. And over the last few years, I see her every once in a while, and it's actually very funny. I recently did a very, very special show. Um, um, we filmed a show which is actually going to be broadcast in the States next uh, this year um, <laughs> at an ancient temple, at an ancient Greek temple. Yeah. And it's the first time um, that the Greek government has ever given permission for such a show to happen. Wow. Uh, it's never happened before. And I called Nana and um, I asked her if she would be my special guest. And because that, you know, that's my my life's dream. I've always dreamed of singing with her. And she said yes, and she was going to come. But unfortunately, due to um, COVID, 
Um, she couldn't make it because, uh, you know, we had travel restrictions and all that stuff, so she couldn't come. Um, but in any case, um, you know, the fact that she's around and she always helps and she's, she's always here to give me advice and um, she, um, to me, you know, she's the, the perfect example of what you can actually achieve with discipline, with hard work. Um, and, you know, because when you come from a small country like we do here in Greece, um, you don't have the support that one would expect. You have to fight for every inch of your career, literally every millimeter of your path. You have to fight twice as hard as, for example, an American artist would yeah. or a British artist would. Um, so the fact that Nana left Greece back in the 60s and um, managed to sell 340 million records and, and have the career that she did is just incredible. And it's an example of, you know, it gives you hope because she did it. So, you know, there's hope. We can do it. <laughs> Absolutely right. And hope is something that I think we've all been talking about in the last many months we've experienced. How have you been through... Uh, all of this crazy time of lockdowns and social distancing and just, you know, I've interviewed a lot of different people. I don't even call these interviews. I call these conversations. Interview is question, answer, question, answer, done. I call yeah. this conversation. Um, number of people I've chatted with, especially if they're a performer, they've been saying, well, Jim, you know, back in the spring, it was okay. And we were on Zoom and all this other technology and we learned how to do virtual stuff and everything. But now 10 months later, they're saying things like, oh, you know, now I'm starting to get a little anxious. I'm getting a little depressed. I'm not, I need the energy of people. I need to be creating. I need to hear the roar of the crowd. I need that because it feeds me and drives me to create more. Mm -hmm. um, so they liked the virtual stuff in the beginning, but to them now it's like, I like it. It's okay. It's a way to stay connected, but I need to be on stage or I need to be in the studio or I need to be out and about amongst the people. I'm just not getting that full effect from the online stuff. How about you? How are you doing? How are you coping? How are you staying positive, hopeful, sane, and creative and connected, my friend? Well, and like you said, the, the first lockdown in, in the springtime was easier for me because um, I got trapped in New York. I was in New York. Um, I, I had just started working on my next English record. And I went there to do, record some demos and some stuff, and then I couldn't leave. Um, and it was a lot of fun because I realized after a while that it was the first time in, I think, almost a decade where I actually got to spend more than three weeks in the same city. It hadn't happened before because, you know, I was constantly moving left and right, you know, whether it was touring or recording or doing promo or anything um, between the States, Greece, and any other country that I've been visiting. So it was the first time that I got to, you know, sit down, um, stay home, enjoy my house. Um, and actually it made me after a while um, reorganize within myself my, my priorities. It made me see clearly the people who are important to me. Um, you know, it, it, I started um, a retrospection of where I was in my life, where I wanted to go, what had happened, what needs to happen, what I wanted to change. Um, so it did a lot of good to me. Um, in order to stay sane, um, you know, I I put in place a sort of discipline, uh, which was working out four four times a week. Um, uh, also, uh, speaking to my therapist twice a week because in the last two years I've started um, psychoanalysis, which is extremely interesting. So, it the discipline of looking in twice a week kept me sane. Cooking, I cooked a lot. Um, chatting with my friends every single day. Um, you know, just nice and simple things like we all did. What are some of the this things that around, you, What are some of the things that you, uh, what are some of the, during all of that uh, yeah. and, and those steps that you've been taking, George, what are some of the things that you've learned about yourself 
that maybe you uh, already knew uh, and now you're able to express or things that you really didn't know, but now you're, you're able to understand, appreciate and express about yourself during this time where we've had more of a quiet time, we've had to be flexible mm -hmm. and pivot. Um, you know, we've had to adjust to everything yeah. that's been happening. What has George learned about himself along the way so far? I learned um, that I am way stronger than what I actually give myself credit for. That's a beautiful thing to learn. Um, I learned that, um, you know, I am a very shy person. Um, I'm not a person who goes into a room and all of a sudden everybody looks at him. Um, I don't do that. I'm not someone who wants to attract attention all the time. But I realized that even though I didn't want it to happen, it happened on its own. Right. Um, so that made me realize that my special um, hidden force is the fact that I'm very, very stable. I have this quiet strength within me, um, which is constant um, and very, very stable, uh, which is something way. that I hadn't realized uh, yeah. in, in forever, actually. I, I, I'd never give it thought. Um, it also made me realize that um, there were a lot of people in my life um, that didn't actually need to exist in my life. And it allowed me to clear out the fields a little bit um, and to concentrate, you know, on just the people who really, really matter. Um, my That's friends and my family, my closest friends and my family. That's a beautiful um, thing. That's the way it should be. And a, a lot of people have been experiencing that. They've been, and it sounds like you've been doing it too. And I think we all have in our own different ways, George. We've been reassessing yeah. our lives because we've had this uh, quiet pivot moment. As horrific and awful as everything has been going on with the yeah. pandemic and the economy. And, and I know over here, we've got the political situation and the civil unrest and everything. But collectively, people have been pausing and they've been looking at their lives and saying, okay, what have I not done that I've always wanted to do? What else is there for me to do that I've sort of pushed aside because I've been so busy over here doing this or, or pleasing these people here or taking care of all these things I've got to take care of and the busyness of life? What do I now want to do going forward that fills my heart, fills my soul? And a lot of people have been reassessing that from careers to relationships to really all aspects of their life. So mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing that you've been able to take the time through all of the fog of this craziness that we've been all experiencing to explore yourself in this way yeah. and realize you're stronger than you thought you were. I'm very yeah, because, you know, I always I, I realized that for the last few years I always spoke about how I wanted to be free. And what I realized this year is that being free actually means that you find the audacity, I would call it audacity, good the strength word. to allow all the elements that you have within yourself to come up on the surface and to look at them, the good and the bad. Um, once you, you see all those elements and they're all a part of you um, and you stop judging them, you stop um, criticizing them, then you become free. And I think that I managed in the last year and a half to liberate myself from a lot of burdens that I had um, on my shoulders. Your shoulders do look a lot lighter. <laughs> Which <Thank> is, you. <laughs> yeah. And that's very liberating and it's very freeing and it's a very beautiful thing, George. And I'm happy to hear that um, because it gives you a clarity now going forward, doesn't it? And a clarity also probably in your music and your presentation going forward. It mm -hmm. translates, doesn't it? Of course, for sure. It does because it translates in every choice you make from now on. Um, but that being said, the second lockdown, I'm not having such a ball. I can tell you, I don't want to cook. I don't want to clean. 
I don't want to do anything. Um, why do I you make myself work out? Sorry. Why do you think that is? What is? What do you think it is about the second lockdown that is? And, and I hear that we're all fed up. We're tired, and you know, it's not in our. It's not in human nature. We're not made to stay. Um, you know, closed within four walls. It's not what you know we're supposed to do. We're supposed to go out. We're supposed to be uh, amongst people. nature. We're supposed amongst people. Um, you know, and also, what has really cost me um, because I am someone who always touches people. Yeah. I hug, I touch, I kiss, I caress. So the fact that, you know, there's a little bit of suspicion, even when you see your friends, you know, now you have to ask, are you safe? Am I safe? Can I yeah. hug you? Can you hug me? Can I touch you? I really hate that. It really annoys me. It's something that I, I can't, it's beyond my <laughs> spectrum of, um, of, I don't know. I don't know what you would say. It's beyond my spectrum of understanding. It's too much. And it's I not, don't want this to come into my relationship with people. This distance, this wall, exactly. And uh, I know what you mean. I'm very, uh, you and I sound very similar in so many different ways. I tend to be sort of that understated, consistent force. I don't walk in a room like you. I don't walk in a room and say, pow, here we are. Hey, put the cameras on me. Look at me. I've never done that. Even though I'm in this industry, like you are with the lights on us and we have this attention that comes, that's part of what we do. And we feed off that energy and then we give it back tenfold in the work that we do. It's not something that is necessarily the thing that drives us. You do what you do because you love it. You're passionate about it. It's in your breath and your being to be an entertainer, a performer, to sing, to interpret song, uh, to spread love and, and to share it. Mine is the same way in the work that I do in television and radio. It's it's to inspire, to lift others up. doesn't have to necessarily be about all the buzz and the bling and all those things. If that comes, that comes with it. That's part of it. It's very nice, but it isn't what drives you or drives me. And I think that's a much more consistent, solid, reliable, moving up not maybe like flat, but moving up consistently. Cause a lot of times people, you know, they go like this, everything goes, whoosh, you know, one hit wonder stuff. And then boom, they're down like that. As opposed to going like this in, in and well, doing it your you know, way. I always tell young artists when now, when I meet younger artists, um, it's what I tell them because I don't like it when I see um, young kids are, especially singers, fueled by you know the um the instant gratification that instagram gives you or this pervasive obsession with fame it, it really annoys me because you know in this job you do not have the right to be or feel entitled mm -hmm. and it cannot happen from one minute to the other um you earn your place through hard work um through devotion through um uh, uh Hard work, 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 and yet more work and patience, you know, and little by little, um, you earn your position, you earn your place, you become who you become and, and the success comes as a result of all of this, but it cannot happen. It cannot be the goal. That's if it's right. the goal, then, then you're done. You're right. done. Right. And we've seen that happen to people over the years. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so you've got the right plan, George. Uh, and, and I understand that Maria goes, Oh, George, you're so special. And, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's staying indoors and not being able to hug is tough. Not even sometimes being able to see family is very, very rough. And we're all, you know, people who like to, to communicate with others and, and to celebrate life that way. But, um, Hopefully things will get better. You know, we'll keep our fingers it crossed. Will. Yeah. It's all you got to it be positive and, and have hope and be positive. Um, so going back to a little bit earlier on for you, George, what were some of those early opportunities that you would consider opportunities that started to open the door for you early on in terms of being noticed, but also having doors open that sort of propelled your career along the way in those early years? Um, well, first of all, I started learning the piano when I was uh, four years old. 
and I was really disciplined about it. I, I went to the uh, I went to the conservatory to music school, and I studied it very hard. And then when I was a kid, I won a couple of um, uh, singing contests here in Greece um, as a teenager. And then right before I turned 18, um, a very close friend of mine who um, has unfortunately passed away now um, sent me to an audition um, of this great composer here in Greece. His name is Mimis Plesas. And at the time he was um, I think in his early 80s, and by chance, he was also the composer who um, discovered Nana Muscuri. Um, so I auditioned for him, and he took me under his wing, and for two years, that was, I was actually 17 and 10 months old. Uh, it was in June 2001, I guess. Um, or, yeah, 2001, I think. Um, and so we went on tour together for two years. We did more than, I think in that first year alone, we did something like 40, 45 shows. And you know, it was a great school for me because I had no idea how this whole thing worked. I didn't know how to hold a mic. I didn't know what a sound check meant. I didn't know how to be on stage. Um, I didn't know anything. So it was, I was very, very lucky because my first years, my formative years, my, my early beginnings, um, I found myself in, in a family that protected me, that was not, um, that was very, very um, caring of me. They took really good care of me and they made sure um, I never felt threatened or in any danger. So these were my two, uh, that was my first, the first rock in my path. And then I, when I was 19, I signed with EMI my first um, record deal. And um, it took me um, three years before we did my first record. And um, my first record was composed by another great uh, composer here in Greece called Stefanos Korkolis. Um, and it was a record that did quite well, even though, you know, I, um, I took a distance from that record because I was a young kid at the time. And, you know, I was, when we were recording this, I was 20 years old. So, First of all, I um, I didn't even know how to believe in my own convictions, artistic convictions, let alone express them clearly. Um, and then a year later, I met Mario, or two years later. Um, and it all happened, it's very funny because what I'm about to tell you happened within one week. Mm. Within a week, um, EMI Records um, canceled my contract. They dropped me. Uh, because we had a disagreement as to what was going to be the second record. So um, we dropped the deal. So I left uh, EMI thinking, oh my God, I'm 22 years old without a record deal. I'm dead. Mm -hmm. I'm, there's nothing is going to happen ever in my life again. And then that night, that was before Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Uh, do you remember MySpace? Do you remember that yeah. beautiful platform? In the beginning, yeah. <laughs> so that night, that same night, I received an email from um, an incredible French um, um, lyricist called Frédéric Baron, who was uh, living in Canada at the time, who said, I stumbled upon your page, and you're the most beautiful uh, male voice I've ever heard. I want to do a French record for you. Um, and then four days later, I met Mario at a... Um, it was... Um, how do you call these things? Uh, a telethon? Is that? Oh is that yeah, word? sure. Yeah, a telethon. It was a telethon for a, for a, uh, a big charity here in Greece where we were both invited to sing. And I met Mario, and um, I was 22 years old at the time. And I said, "Listen, can you please give me your advice? Can you please listen to me and tell me what you think of my singing?" And um, and actually, that same night, uh, Mario asked me to join him um, on his summer tour. So you know. I always remember, we have a, a, a say here in Greece, which my grandmother always used to say was, whenever a door closes, mm. a little window will open somewhere, which right. is what happened. So within a week, even though I had lost my record deal, um, I started working on my French record and, um, and I met someone who uh, became, you know, um, a mentor of mine and uh, we collaborated on many, many projects with Mario. So, and then little by little, things started to evolve. Um, and 
I went on my path. The next, the next moment for me was meeting Lara, Lara Fabian, Lara Fabian, as you call her in America. Yeah, Fabian, right? <laughs> yeah, Lara Fabian. It sounds fancy Lara, when you say it, Fabian. <laughs> uh, it's uh, Lara Fabian, if yeah. you want to say it in French. <laughs> much, more, much more fancy. <laughs> um, you know, and Lara was my uh, my uh, teenage idol. Yeah. Because when I was a teenager, she was, you know, at the height of her career, and I used to see a young girl who wrote her own songs, who had this divine, and still has this divine voice. And, you know, I always looked up to her. You know, when I was 17 years old, if you had asked me, who do you want to meet, Barbara Streisand or Lara Fabian, the answer would have been Lara, because um, that's how much I loved her. So for my second record, um, I uh, had two of her songs translated in Greek. Um, mm. so I wanted to do covers of two of her songs. And that was the year that Mario invited her in Greece, and we were all performing together at a show. And the moment when Mario uh, went to introduce me to Lara, and he says, Lara, this is, she goes, George, oh, and she gives me a big hug. And I go to her, where do you know me? Mm. And she goes to me, what do you think? Um, you think, if, I, I wouldn't let you sing my songs if I didn't know who you were. I've seen all of your videos on YouTube. And, um, we became great, great, great friends. And since then, we did a duet together. We wrote songs together. Uh, we toured together. We did many, 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 many things. Mm. She's wonderful. She, you know, I interviewed her as well on public television way back. And she mm -hmm. just, she's just so elegant and pleasant and a gorgeous voice. And uh, that's wonderful, having an opportunity to be exposed to Mario and to Lara. And again, even like Bernadette says here, your friendship with Mario, beautiful thing to behold. I agree. You know, the thing that I learned from Mario, the, the most important thing to me, which is funny because uh, a few days ago, well, actually it's a few weeks now, we were together, Mario and I, and we were watching um, uh, a series of documentaries for incredible opera singers because I, I've also loved opera ever since I was a kid. Um, and the one thing that really struck me was the fact that some of the group, not some, all the great opera singers in history, they supported one another. Mm. They passed the torch from, from one to the other. Uh, so, you know, um, Joan Sutherland uh, made it happen for Pavarotti and Caballé made it happen for Carreras. And I think that Mario got that from yeah. those singers. And that's why he's so... Um, passionate about helping singers. That is a, that is a lesson that I learned from him. And you know, now that it's my time, um, I try to help um, young kids as much as I can as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a beautiful thing too. Um, here's a picture of you and Mario that we have, and you can tell us about this. This I, I just love this shot. Right. Shows great friendship. Uh, that was from the photo shoot from the record we did together uh, four or five years ago. And I love that shot because, yeah, it's very um, it's uh, uh, very representative of who we are. We're both very goofy. Uh, he looks like a star, and I'm the one doing, you know, stupid things. From <laughs> <laughs> He's like, look at him. He's like Cole Gate Boy with his beautiful smile. And I'm like, yeah. Do you feel like brothers in a way? Is it is it you know that kind of a friendship where? No, I wouldn't say friends? that. I wouldn't say that. I mean, you know, over the years we became very. We have a very close relationship. We we are great collaborators. We, you know, Mario and I. It's very rare uh, when you have great chemistry with a partner on stage. It's not yeah. easy. It doesn't happen with everyone. That's it right. happens with a few people, but it doesn't happen with everyone. So Mario is one of the few people um, that I've had great uh, chemistry on, on, on stage and our voices blend in a very, very um, uh, special way. And it's very funny because when we were recording that record, um, which was a record of covers of some of the most well-known Greek songs from the 80s and 90s um, that we turned into duets, there were many times when we were at the studio where we weren't is that you now or is it me? We couldn't tell one voice from the other. 
Um, that's how well they blend and and they have, um, you know, um, there's like a, an intimacy and um, a complicity. That's the right word. A complicity. The two words have a complicity. Uh, the two voices have a complicity between them, which is um, it's bigger than us. It is what it is. And it's not by chance, I believe. Right, right, exactly. Uh, not by chance. It was like meant to be. And they do. I've heard both of you together. And there is this just wonderful thread and weaving in and out and blending that is, is quite unique and quite special. And, um, and, I think it's, and I think it's terrific. You're both, you know, wonderful individually, but when you are together, it's something very special as well. So, so we talked about it's this. Time for a I have to tell him. Yeah, we talked about this cute little kid and all the aspirations and uh, all the dreams. And uh, mm -hmm. and again, you've had an opportunity to live that in so many different ways. I have some more photos I want to show folks as we go along the way here sure. and um, that, that I think are quite special. Tell us about this one here. Oh, that's with Lara. Yeah, that was in uh, what was it? That was in Canada. That was in Montreal. Um, a couple of years ago, I think, um, we did some shows together and, uh, I was actually a special guest on her shows. Um, and you know, Lara and I have a very, it's the same chemistry that I have with Mario. Um, it's inexplicable. I can't explain it. I can't put words to it. Our voices blend in a magic way. And I think that's why we've become so close friends as well, um, over the years. Oh, that was in LA. That was actually when I came to LA to shoot my pledge breaks for my PBS special. And Lara happened to be there at the same time. We had such a ball, my God. And we also got so drunk that night. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here I mean, first, folks. That, that picture was before we opened the first bottle of wine. As you can tell, we, we look normal here. Thank God there's no proof of what happened later on. <laughs> I'm guessing it was a French wine. <laughs> uh, actually, no, it was Italian wine. Oh, okay. It's half Italian. And, uh, That's right. Our, we, by chance, my favorite wine is her favorite wine. Uh, it's Amarone. And we had quite a few of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> celebrating hard work. You got to celebrate, right? Uh, to be honest with you, we were celebrating the fact that we were both a little bit miserable in LA. I never have a good time in LA. I'm sorry, folks. I don't know if, it's, if there's anyone here from LA, but I never have a good time in LA. It's not my favorite uh, city in the world. You like so. New York better? Oh, yeah. Of course, New York is my second home. I, I love yeah. It. yeah. It's a different energy. Uh, it's a totally different energy. Absolutely. Tell us about this one, Hope. Uh, this one, this is a very special photo. This was taken at uh, Jazz at Lincoln Center in New York yes, when we right. filmed my first um, TV special, my first PBS special. And I love the shot because what I've always wanted to uh, share with people, with my audience, with my fans, is hope. Mm -hmm. Because I think that music is a language that is stronger and um, above anything else. It's, it's bigger than us. Mm -hmm. um, and the most important thing that it has carried over the centuries is that it, it has hope, that there's hope that we can get better than that. The, even the most difficult situation at one point, whether it's sooner or later, that's a different um, story, but everything gets better one way or the other. Right, exactly. And having hope makes the difference, my friend. I know you're, you're spot on with that. We've got another wonderful photo here. I love that photo with the hope sign. Uh, this one, he, well, this one is in a very special location. Ah, uh, yes. This is from the ancient temple. It's the temple of Afer. Um, It's on the island of Egina, and it's uh, from the show I did this year in September um, that we filmed. And I cannot wait for you to see it. We're actually putting the final touches uh these days and i can't wait for you to see it well that where will that be shown so we can see it i cannot say um right now unfortunately i can't disclose it yet but very soon i will, will it, 
It will be broadcast in 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 uh, various countries around the world. Will it be something? You know, it's, it's a historic event. Yeah. Um, will it be television or online or both? Both. Oh, great. Uh, and given the fact that you know it's something like that has never happened before because oh. the stage that we set up was literally um not even 50 centimeters away from the from the temple we were at a breath distance um from the from the temple so this was i think that this was definitely one of if not the uh pinnacle of my career so far it was one of the most and definitely one of the two or three most important moments in my life i think that you know it was actually something very weird happened that night it was the yeah. first time in my life that um i cried during a show i couldn't mm -hmm. hold it. it it had never happened to me before what what, um, and what do you think triggered it what were you feeling and uh, experiencing that is it the location is it the the culmination of everything hard work put you know, in what I think that it was, I saw my whole life passing by because you know this yeah. show. Um, it's a um, a co-production between the Greek National Tourism Organization because they're going to use a segment from that um, performance as the uh, promotional tour for uh, tourism in Greece this year. Mm. Um, and at the same time, it's also produced by. Um, the Horatio Alger Association, you know, for which I'm an international ambassador. And, you know, the, I felt the responsibility that I had at that moment. But yeah. also at the same time, I felt so fortunate to a degree that I cannot even begin to explain. I felt so humbled yeah. and lucky to be the first person in, in, in thousands of years to be allowed to do this. Mm. Um, so, you know, it, it filled me with, with awe, just awe. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, right. And that's, and that's a beautiful thing to have that come and to realize that that means that you're really, you know, you really care about the project. You care about what you do and that translates in the music and people, people can feel that George, they know that you're all in and you're, it's coming from your heart and soul. Yeah, they I hope they do. I think they do. They, here's another great shot. Tell us about this one. Oh, that's with my beautiful Tina. Um, so this is Tina Arena. For those who don't know her, Tina is um, Australia's most beloved singer. Mm. Um, actually, one in three homes in Australia owns a Tina Arena record. Wow. Um, she uh, performed the... Um, the song of the uh, Sydney Olympics for the opening ceremony. Uh, that's important she is. Uh, but she's also enjoyed an international career. She's sung all over the world. Um, and uh, a few years ago, she invited me as her guest in, in Australia, and we did a beautiful tour. We did, I think, 20 or 25 shows. And then a few years ago, I invited her to be my special guest um, in Athens at the Acropolis when we did the, uh, the Herodoticus which was a beautiful show that we shared with Mario. Um, Mario had Jorge Calandrelli as his guest, um, and I had Tina Arena, um, which was actually my second TBS special. My, uh, my part of the show was filmed, and um, it was broadcast on PBS. It did really, really, really well uh, mm -hmm. two years ago. So I'm, I'm very proud of that show. And I'm very proud I sang with Tina. Oh, look at her. Look how beautiful she is. Yeah. She's an incredible singer. She's a generous woman. Here's another woman um, that I feel extremely connected to. And um, we have a great chemistry. We are close friends. She came to my house a few years ago and we uh, on holidays with her family to my um, country house. And we had a beautiful time. Um, she's someone who's very dear to my heart. She's a very special person. Mm. Um, what I also love about Tina, I'll tell you two funny stories. Um, what I love about Tina is that she's very political. She's one of these artists who are not afraid of speaking their mind and saying what they have to say. And thanks to Tina um, and a whole campaign that she started, now Australian radio uh, is obliged to play 40% local music, Australian music. And the other thing that I loved about her um, is because, you know, mainstream radio stations, they have um, um, a sort of racism 
uh, against women after their 40s, they're considered they're considered too old and they don't play them. Um, and so when Tina uh, received her Lifetime Achievement Award um, back in Australia, she said she she went she took the mic and said to everyone around you, to all the radio uh, guys out there, I will tell you when I'm ready to go. Until then, you have to play me. Um, and I love the fact that she's so strong um, and opinionated and feisty. That's something that I really admire. That's fantastic. That's uh, Did you write down some tips from watching her do that <laughs> for yourself, uh, maybe? <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. Well, you know, I am um, – one of the other things that I realized during this uh, quarantine is that I am a very political person. I mean, I've always known, but I've – um, sometimes I felt afraid to express my opinions. Mm -hmm. um, and then I realized, what's the point of having an opinion if you're not going to express it, you know? Um, so yeah, for sure, Tina um, is an example uh, for me on that level, on many levels. The wonderful Michelle Legrand. Tell us about this. Mario had mentioned this, that um, that you had this wonderful opportunity to have a you know, a wonderful relationship with him, friendship, and uh, just this mutual admiration of each other's talents. Tell us about this. Uh, um, first of all, Michel was one of my idols when I was a kid. I adored his music. You know, he's won three Academy Awards and he's been nominated for 14 or 15 um, awards, I think. And he's won, I don't know, six gazillion Grammys or something. Yeah. Um, He's always been an idol of mine, and his music is um, just exists in my body, in my in my blood, in my DNA. Absolutely. So um, when I did my first English record, my label at the time, uh, Decca Records, they were adamant that they wanted me to have a cover on the record, um, and I said, "Fine, but I'm going to choose the cover," and I chose. Um, I Will Wait For You, which is the theme song from The Umbrellas of Shambhu, mm -hmm. uh, which is actually a song that Nana sang, composed by uh, Michel. And um, we sent him the demo, and, um, you know, I was expecting that, you know, I was going to get, like, um, uh, an email from the, the assistant of the assistant of the third secretary right. saying, yeah, you can do it, or, you know, you got permission to do it, fine, whatever. Instead, he called me, mm. um, and the f fun fact is that I hung up on him because I thought it was a friend of mine playing a joke on me. Yeah. Uh, like, there's no way this is Michel Legrand on the phone. So I was like, yeah, dude, and I'm the queen of England. Bye. <laughs> um, and then he called me up a second time, and, um, you know, he was a sweetheart. He, he told me how much he loved my version of the song and that he... Um, he was looking forward for us to play together. And so uh, the opportunity came up and um, two years later, I think we're a year and a half later, we did two incredible shows together in Russia with the, uh, the uh, Moscow Symphony and the St. Petersburg uh, Symphony. We're sold out in both homes. We had 7,000 people in Moscow and I think 6,000 people in, in St. Petersburg. And um, this is something that I'll never forget. Um, it's an experience that I'll never forget in my life because what was so special about Michel is the fact that even though he knew that perfection did not exist, he was adamant about chasing it to a degree that I had never seen before in my life. Before we even started rehearsing, we went through the songs note by note, word by word. He wanted to have, he wanted me to um, have knowledge of the, the actual score. He wanted me to, to um, work on every single little detail. Yeah. Um, so it was something that I'll never forget. And then I invited him over to Greece and um, um, we were going to do a show together um, at, the, uh, at the Herod Atticus, at the Acropolis. Um, and the day came, Michel came to Greece, and unfortunately, it rained. That day was pouring, and we couldn't do the show. 
Um, and I think after, um, and instead of doing the show, we went and had dinner at this beautiful fish tavern uh, in Greece because he loved fish. And, um, you know, we, we chatted, we had a beautiful long conversation and um, it's something that I'll never forget. And I think, I yeah, here you go. That's the photo from that day. Um, and I'll never forget, I have it on video. He asked me to sing a song for him, one of his songs, which I did. And he started crying and he gave me a kiss um, on my cheek. And that was the last time I saw him because unfortunately he, he passed away a few months later. Mm. Um, but, you know, meeting him and working with him was definitely one of the most important things that I've done in my life. And I'm extremely grateful um, um, that it happened. I'm extremely grateful that we played together. Um, for some of the stuff that he told me, which I actually don't want to share with you only because they're so, so, so personal and so humbling. But um, yeah, I'm a little emotional now because it's it's someone that I, I love deeply. He's a, he was a very, very special, special man. Grace, the world was such extraordinary melodies and beautiful music. And to have had the opportunity to, uh, you know, we come across people in our lives, as you know, George, whether they're, you know, family or friends or, or colleagues or just people that come into our lives that leave an indelible impression on us, on our heart and soul. And uh, we are forever changed by that relationship, whether it's professional or personal. And True. to have had the opportunity to, you know, grace each other's presence, you and Michelle Legrand, um, is extraordinary. And again, a blessing yeah. and a joy that even though we all lost him, um, his music lives on forever. His memory lives on. Oh, forever. for sure. But you have to go story. on. That's the, the that's the. The incredible beauty of music is that it goes on and on and on. And you have special memories with him that will you'll hold in your heart as well that will take you and carry you through uh, the rest of your own career and the rest of your own days as well. And there's the one we mentioned, Nana Muscuri, who is you know, obviously a beloved international Greek legend. I had the pleasure of interviewing her on public television where she had a special. She was nothing more than you and I were chatting before we went live on the air. Gracious, elegant, warm, yeah. friendly. This is a wonderful photo of the tour. Oh, that's from the first day I met her. That's from the day I met Nana. Uh, mm. You can see how happy I am. My smile goes all the way to my ears. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, the, the four-year-old kid in me was having a, a ball. I was jumping up and down. Um, yeah. And you know, I'll tell you a funny story about Nana. Um, when I was 15 years old, she came to Greece and it was the first show she'd done in Greece in like 10 years or so at the Acropolis, at the Herod Atticus. And I went to see her, of course, and I wanted to go and meet her backstage. And, you know, I was just a kid. Um, I was not a singer yet and all that stuff. And um, the security measures were incredible. So, you know, I was not allowed in backstage and all that stuff. And I thought to myself, I just have to find a way and, and, um, and, and get to meet her. So what I did was I climbed, I went back into the theater, I climbed up the stage, <laughs> um, actually turned around, looked at the audience, said, one day I'm gonna be singing here. And then I went back through the main gate and went backstage and I actually got to um, say hi to her. But this photo was from the day we met, um, I think five years ago. You both look very, very happy there. Yeah. She oh, looks, trust me, I am. <laughs> and she looks as eager and happy to have met you as well, which I think is absolutely beautiful. Speaking oh. of hugging and something we can't do right now that we're all craving to return back to, you got some good hug action going on here, my friend. Oh, that's Tina. That one's with Tina. That's in Sydney, I think, or Melbourne. I can't remember, but it's in Australia. It was the final show from the tour we did. Uh, you can tell we love each other, see? <laughs> you can tell um, that we love each other. Yeah, that's it. And you guys stay in touch, you stay connected. Yeah, of course, of course. Here's a really cool shot. Oh, that's from um, a show I did last year. That was a very, very difficult show because 
Um, this was a visual show. Um, basically, there was a whole, uh, there were videos projected on these um, transparent screens that you see here. Um, I love your reaction there, the way you're looking at like, Oh my God, look at that. What? What's going yeah. on behind me? <laughs> yeah. You know, it was a very, it took many, many months of rehearsals because that meant that my every single note, gesture, and um, path had to be in perfect sync because yeah. everything was on, on playback. I mean, my musicians were live, but we had tracks on playback and the videos, you know, if I missed a beat, yeah. then we were done. Uh, the whole show was would be ruined so it took a lot of work hard discipline and it was an idea um that i shared with the incredible greek lyricist uh, lina nicolakopoulou who wrote the lyrics to my last greek record and who is a huge legend mm. uh, in Greece. Mm. it's very cool the way they did that i mean i think it's you know it's, it's got a cool vibe to it this i mean too with the hand and all yeah. and but this was a whole um, choreography around this because at some point the hand hugged me and I got lost inside the hand. Oh boy! Uh, yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful. Uh, very, uh, yeah, very creative for sure, huh? Yeah, that's very cool. It's another shot here too. Oh, uh, that's Lincoln Center. That's Jazz and Lincoln Center, and um, that's from when we did the special. And yeah. It's very funny because you can see the snow. Two days before the show, there was a huge snowstorm. That's that right. Day. That's right. And um, I had freaked out. I was like, oh, my God, the show is not going to happen. I came all the way to New York, and we're not going to do the show. Um, but it turns out we did it, and it was a beautiful moment. The show must go on, like they say, For right? For sure. It must go on. For sure. uh, that's outside the Acropolis, the, the Herod Atticus Theater. Um, that was from a photo shoot we did. Um, uh before the show with michelle legrand i think very nice that's a cool shot too and uh here's another one similar name as well uh, that but is the actual acropolis behind uh, you know i'm very proud to be greek i'm very proud to um um share my greekiness with the world uh you know it's my identity and um one of the things that um I'm adamant about um, sharing with it. my music is the fact that I'm Greek and that Greece has a culture and a vault of culture that is very, very um, substantial. Yeah. And deep. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, and you're also French too, and have the wonderful French connection, which is wonderful. A wonderful. Yes. A wonderful blend. I want to. Sh we've got more to show, but I want to uh, show some folks uh, some of the cool times that we've been together with uh, mutual friends. Oh, show me. Look at the crowd oh here. Oh my God! There's Mario and Andrea and and Dimitra. Oh, oh, and our musicians and Tonya and Yana. Oh my God! Isn't that a cool shot? <laughs> Who was that? Do you remember? Uh, this was in New York and this, I believe we had all gotten together after Mario's, uh, performance when he was doing, uh, a special and we got together, Nina Pineda, Andrea, uh, you, me, uh, Angelos Matsupolis, uh, was also with us. Zach is not in the photo. I don't see her. Not in this one. There is another one coming up. Uh, the and you see Zach in the back, Zach Zinger is back there as yes. well. Tall one that was just we had whenever we've all gotten together, we've always had great times. There's another one here with me, you, and oh. Mary. My god, you look the same. I look much younger. Ah, <laughs> you and Mario look the same. I <laughs> do not look the same anymore. <laughs> you look fine. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? This was at the cutting room in New York City when our friend Tammy McCann had her CD release, remember? Yes, of course. That was a beautiful show. That was, uh, yeah, we always have great times in world. Tammy is such a beautiful singer. Such she, a beautiful, beautiful act, singer. Yeah, actually, there's the whole crowd. There she is. Oh, and Katie. Yeah, and Katie, Aww. Mario, and you, and myself. And uh, Tammy was a guest on the show in December. We did a Christmas uh, episode of the Gym Masters show live, and it was, it was terrific. And... Uh, 
yeah, we've always stayed in touch too. She's just, she's a real sweetheart. She really is. And, uh, you know, we're fortunate when we get a chance to, whether it's through our work, meet folks or whether it's personally to stay, to stay connected and stay yeah. friends. Not everybody in these, this, these industries do that. You know, they work together, they're at a function together and then they go on and like whatever. But when you have an opportunity to stay together with friends and, and, root for each other and support each other and cheer each other on as we have all done. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, here's another one. There's Nina in there. Ah, uh, there's Nina. Yeah. And that was and Andrea looking fabulous. Andrea. Yep. And me, you and Mario. And yeah, that's a really, really nice shot too. Look at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, look at those smiley faces. There's Angelos. Uh, do you ever, uh, chat with Angelos at all. He's a wonderful. I haven't seen him in a while. I haven't yeah. seen him in a while. Great guitarist as well. This one is a nice, I love this one too. Mario will love this one as well. So did Tammy. Um, Where is that from? This I believe was also in New York and it was right after Mario's concert. Uh, we, yeah, we got together backstage, me, Mario, Tammy, and you. And uh, I love your expression where you're pointing. It's like, hey, ah. there you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a cool shot. Everybody, you look great. What are you talking about? Oh, right? please send them to me. I don't have these photos. I want to have them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, this is a fun one, too. Uh, oh, that's cool. Isn't that cool? This was a Tammy yeah. uh, signing. So uh, the CD release at the Cutting Room in New York City. So We've had so many great times together and more, of course, to to come. And uh, just wanted to show these. We showed these during Mario's uh, episode as well. And I thought it was just great to see uh, and share with everybody that we've actually known each other for a long time. Um, I love this shot. Aww. We use this in our promo announcing you're coming on as my guest on the show. Uh, tell us about this shot. It's the photographer, they did a brilliant job. That was, um, where is this photo? From? Oh, that was from my first English record. Mm. Uh, that was a photo shoot we did for Picture This. Uh, and it was actually in an old warehouse. It was at the, uh, the Greek National Opera Warehouse. It's where they have all the scenery from various operas. Um, and that's where the photographer wanted to put me in. And yeah. It's a beautiful photo. I like it. I really like it. S spectacular choice yeah great great choice there i showed this one earlier too that's cool oh. <laughs> yeah i like the suit too um, yeah what I were you thinking what what was your expression what were you thinking uh, in your mind when they uh, you know started? what i was thinking uh, it's actually very funny because that day i was in a bad mood and uh my stylist uh who's a friend of mine he went like when I saw the green suit, I was like, dude, I'm not wearing that. I ain't wearing that suit. It, There's no way I'm going to wear a green worked. suit. It worked. Um, and my friend went to me, you know what? I don't care. You're yeah. going to wear it right now. Do the yeah. photos. And that's going to be the end of it. So I thought, all right, here we go. I'm wearing green suit. Let's pretend I'm enjoying this. <laughs> but turns out we have this great shot. <laughs> yeah. You know what? There seems to be a theme here, my friend. So you were sort of brooding in that shot and it turned out to be a great shot. You were brooding in that shot and that turned out to be a great shot. So some of your best shots are if you're not super smiling from ear to ear, you have to be brooding and that takes a great shot. See, there's a theme we got going on here. Now that suit looks really cool. Was it sort of like a uh, dark blue or purple shirt with it? Uh, dark blue. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Cool. Cool combination. Obviously the photographer had a good eye there. Oh, tell us about this cool shot. Oh, that's, um, Looks that's from a music video we did for my song, uh, called how many does it take? That yeah. was a very special song for me. Um, uh, it's a song I wrote about addiction, about, um, alcoholism. Mm. And, uh, we did an incredible video. Uh, directed by a very good friend of mine here in Greece called Claire Fafuti. And, um, and we had a great dancer who did, and those are not my hands, they're the dancer's hands. Yeah. Uh, and that song changed my life because I wrote it in a, at a very difficult time for me. And uh, after it was released, I realized how many people it helped because obviously there, there were a lot of people in the same situation. And, um, 
a few months after it was released, uh, Whoopi Goldberg actually discovered the song and posted it on her social media. And, um, you know, that was fun. Uh, and it was really nice to, to, to see that she loved the song. Um, and that song has followed me ever since. And I always enjoy uh, doing it live. I always sing it when, when I'm performing. That's beautiful. You know, music with a message is always beautiful too, George, as you know. Here's another great shot, my friend. Oh, it's from the same video. There were, um, like, I don't know, the director, she had put like um, hundreds of uh, water glasses on a table. And then I took the baseball bat and broke them all. You know, you can, yeah. that's my not very kind face. That's not cute George here. That's the other George. It's the, the, the other kind of. More brutal. You know, <laughs> don't get on my wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> so would that be more the Greek side or the French side? <laughs> oh, come oh on. that would be the combination of the two because, you know, well, actually Greeks and French, um, they have a lot in common. Yeah. They have a, we like to nag about everything. <laughs> that's what we have in common. We, we're you? not happy with anything. Would you say are you are you a perfectionist? Uh, unfortunately, to a sickening degree, to a, a degree which is uh, tiring for the people around me, for myself. Um, but I just, it's beyond me. There's nothing I can. I have I have accepted it. Um, you know, there's not much I can do. It's it's who I am. I know that it drives everyone crazy. It drives me crazy. There are moments when you know I'm mixing or working on something I'm like, oh, not again. I mean, just stop, go to bed. Um, but you know, there's nothing I can do about it. I, I've accepted it now. It is what it is. Right, exactly. And it works, you know, for what you're doing in, in the career, but probably over time, it, you know, maybe lessens a little bit. You know what I've said? I, I think it becomes worse actually. Here's this uh, as time goes by. You might want to try this because I have some uh, aspects of that too. And I also do think there are a lot of people that work in these industries. These mm -hmm. industries demand perfection, whether it's music, television, radio, film, t movies, you know, anything <clears throat> performance and creative does sort of demand everything look right and come off right and be presented perfectly beautifully so what i thought is because i have some friends that also say the same thing in the industries a way that might help you not eliminate it because it's the essence of who you are it probably drives what one of the things that drives you forward gets you not to be stagnant is that drive for perfection but <clears throat> if you soften it by maybe saying instead of uh, striving for perfect, because a lot of times perfect doesn't necessarily exist, say that you're striving for excellence. And when I've told that to a lot of people, they're like, oh, I like that. Boy, that feels much more, I could breathe more. I'm still dry, striving for something really terrific in, in a certain way, in a certain look and feel and whatever it is. But Striving for perfection can be more claustrophobic than saying, I'm striving for excellence. So I wish I could do that, Jim. I'm try that. I can't. It'll drive, I won't sleep at night. <laughs> I, I, I just will not sleep at night. It has to be perfect. I mean, perfect. I'll go to my sound engineer with 10 pages of comments per song <laughs> saying, you know, uh, one minute and 36 seconds, The this note, the C from the violin is a little sharp. We have to, I mean, I, it drives me crazy. If I can't, I just, I have, I have to go for perfection. Even though I know it's not possible, there's no way you can achieve perfection. Um, if you strive for it, you'll get maybe a 20% if you're lucky. Try it on one of the things that you do coming up. Just try to put in your head, if you can, that you're striving for excellence and see if it, you know, it may work, might not, but see if it helps. Right. To, yeah, I'm trying because excellence is is fantastic as well, and and I know you always strive for uh, for excellence, so um, that might loosen it. You know, I, I've adjusted myself to say that 
word and it sort of makes it a little bit easier. Not that it doesn't eliminate, it doesn't eliminate all the stuff that you just said. You're not making it easier for me. If it's not, it's not easier. Sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's perfectionist, darn it. And that's it. <laughs> Here's another great shot we have here. Now, another great, um, and brilliant artist, of course, my friend, uh, Placido Domingo, huh? Oh, uh, yes. He was one of my heroes as well. That was backstage at the Met mm -hmm. uh, when I met her, uh, when I met him and he was so gracious. Mm. Uh, he was so nice, so kind, so generous. He's also one of these artists who have um, made it a point out of um, helping young artists and supporting them. You know, he has the Operalia um, uh, contest, which has, um, you know, helped many, 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 many young singers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's fantastic. What was it like that initial meeting? You must have been pinching yourself. Oh my God. You have no idea. I was in awe just to be next to him. Yeah. And he was like, as if we were old buddies, right. you know, I was like, I, I could barely move or breathe. I was like, oh, this is Placido Domingo. I can't, don't move, just smile and pretend it's normal. Um, and he was acting as if we were best friends. <laughs> right, exactly. A cool, very, very cool experience. There's another one. You're grinning oh. from here to here, there as well. Yeah, nice. Yeah. <clears throat> that was a very um, special moment. Uh, that's David Helfgott, for those who don't know him. Remember the movie, uh, what was it called? The, uh, uh, the Shining. Oh yeah, uh, with Jeffrey Rush, uh, Jeffrey Jeffrey Rush, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which was the life of this incredible pianist. And um, uh, when I was in Australia, I I got to meet him. I went to one of his concerts, and then he actually came to my show. Um, and uh, that's where this photo is from. Very nice. And you're both grinning from ear to ear in that shot. That's for sure. <laughs> got mm -hmm. another one here. Love this one. Oh, uh, that's with Sir Richard Barning. Um, Richard Barning is one of the most legendary uh, composers of, uh, excuse me, um, directors, orchestra directors, conductors of all times. And um, uh, he has a, an annual gala in, in Sydney called the, the uh, Joan Sutherland and Richard Barning Foundation. And um, he personally chose me uh, to be the only pop singer who would sing, because it's only classical singers, and I was the only pop singer uh, who sang at that benefit gala. And it's very funny because um, when we had a chat, he goes to me after I sang, he goes to me, you know, I can't decide whether you're a pop singer trapped in the body of a classical singer or a classical singer trapped in the body of a, of a pop singer. Mm. Uh, and I thought, and I said to him, Mr. Bonning, Neither do I. I'll never figure it out. <laughs> but it was um, a beautiful moment um, that I'll never forget. It was it was a beautiful experience, and it was lovely to meet him. Ah, it was a great. Oh, one. there you go. So, of course, Mari on the right, and in, and between us, uh, two Greek legends. Um, next to me is George Talaras, who is let's say the um, he's the greatest Greek singer of all time for me. Um, like. Uh, you know, he's the Greek Sting, for example. And next to him is Lina Nikolakopoulou, who is the greatest lyricist of the last 50 years in Greece. She's a poet, she's an incredible human being. And I was very lucky to work with the, with both of them. Um, George and I did a duet together recently, which is actually the theme song of a, of a very um, successful TV show here in Greece right now. And Lina uh, wrote lyrics to all my, uh, to all the songs of my new record. Mm. That's incredible. That is a really fantastic shot. You even got a chance to work with Kermit the Frog, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that was, um, that. You know, here I am being my natural self, which is goofier than the goofiest person on the planet. But um, that was actually, uh, where was I? It was a PBS station, I yeah. think in Sacramento or San Francisco. I can't remember. It was in California. And yeah. as soon as I saw Kermit, I fell in love with him. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah together <laughs> yeah. that's cool i've always enjoyed also uh cookie monster i think it's probably because of all yeah. the cookies. <laughs> cookie monster <laughs> now this is great now speaking of excellence uh, 
Here you are at the Excellence Gala. <laughs> yes, see? Uh, so that was a beautiful uh, gala organized by the Horatio Alger Association. Yeah. Uh, Tell us about that organization for people who might not be as familiar. Mario had mentioned a little bit about it. He, and I know you, it's near and dear to your heart. Well, it's it's very dear to my heart. It's an association that helps and supports uh, young children uh, who are about to become students um, and offers them scholarships so that they can um, go to higher education. They have awarded more than $130 million in scholarships in the last few years, which is incredible it's a huge number and um i met them through mario and uh i became an international ambassador for them um mm -hmm. we've done many projects together i sang in numerous galas uh for them and i chose this picture because it's right to the point of what we do you know you see 20 young kids around me and um yeah i sing for them and i actually wrote a song for them on my uh, first record um called shine which was this, because, you know, I can relate to, the, to these kids coming myself from, from a very difficult childhood because mm -hmm. what all these kids have in common is that they come from, uh, uh, you know, a very, uh, uh, a childhood uh, that has been very tough, very difficult, whether it's extreme poverty or abuse or, um, you know, addiction, anything, you can, anything, you name it. Um, yeah. You know, and, but they're all, extremely bright kids who have their lives ahead of them, um, you know, and, um, um, you know, they, they were able to turn adversity into something positive. And yeah. so coming myself, you know, from a very difficult childhood, um, I can relate to them and, um, and feel close to them. So that's why um, the Horatio Alger is so important to me. That's beautiful. Beautifully stated, my friend. And, uh, Passionately stated. Love this one. You're now here. You're <laughs> really grinning from ear to ear, having a good time. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I love that when the guests have their reactions to the photos. I love your reactions to these photos. What's happening here? A lot of happy so, things. These are two special women. Uh, on on the right is Lina Nikolakopoulou, the the woman I was telling you before, uh, the great lyricist. And in the middle is Evan Fiarevutsika, who is a huge composer that we have here in Greece. She's actually won the um, International Soundtrack Award because um, she writes music for films. And these two incredible uh, women uh, wrote my last Greek record, which uh, was released a few months ago. And um, this was um, from a TV show. I think we were shooting some TV show somewhere in the middle of Greece. I can't remember where we were. and. Uh, I, you know, the thing that bonds us is our sense of humor. We had an incredible time working on this record and recording the record. And as you can see, I'm dying um, in laughter. And so is Avantia in the middle. And Lena is watching us thinking, oh, my God, I'm in trouble with these two. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrific. Uh, I love it because, you know, it's, it's, it's indicative of, of who we are and what we are in reality. And what is the setting? I see swings and things in the back there. It's a cool spot. I have no idea where this is from. I can't remember. I really can't. Yeah. Um, we were shooting something, but I, I can't remember what. Yeah. Cool. It's a cool shot. And the way the sun, too, is. Uh, yeah, it's during sunset. Very nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, everybody, uh, that's come on, love it easy. Four-year-old. Yeah, mm -hmm. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> I love that photo. Look at the size of the headphones. earphones are bigger than my head. Yeah, isn't it cool? <laughs> yeah. And the stereo system, the turntable and everything. So you know, it's, uh, it's very funny. I was a very naughty kid. I was, a, I was a, um, you know. No, I, you? I was not quiet at all. The uh, only way it could, um, you know, make me stop talking and breaking things left and right <laughs> was to put an anonymous Kuri record on the turntable. As soon as they would put the, the record on, I would run uh, and go close to the speaker or put those huge earphones on my head right. um, and uh, listen to music and stuff everything. That's cool. So when you were a kid, when you were that age, you mentioned Nana, what other kinds of music were you listening to then as a kid? Did you listen to a lot of pop, classical? I mean... What was uh, 
what was I discovered? Um, well, Nana was my first influence, and a Greek yeah. composer called Manos Hadzidakis, who um, he actually uh, won the, the Academy Award for uh, Never on Sunday back in 1960. Mm -hmm. um, I, another influence of mine was uh, Charles Aznavour, who was mm -hmm. a great French uh, singer and songwriter. Then I discovered classical music through my piano studies, um, and I started listening to a lot of classical. Yeah. Um, by the age of 12, um, I discovered Maria Callas, and I fell in love with opera and, and her voice, and I started exploring, you know, the world of opera. Uh, and then I started listening to a lot of Greek music and some pop music, but some specific singers like George Michael, who was always an incredible inspiration of mine. I love him. I love him to bits. I think he's an incredible, incredible artist. Uh, Lara Fabian, like we said before, um, you know, and a whole bunch of other people. Um, but I was never the kind of guy who would put the radio on and listen to music on the radio. I would always buy records and listen to what I wanted to listen to. I like that. That's because you had your own desire, your own style. What what does George listen to now? Like what would be in your, you know, iPod or you know, your CD player, whatever it is. What styles of music do you enjoy today, my friend? I listen to a lot of classical music. Um, I really enjoy classical. And then I choose uh, the singers that I want to listen. I haven't changed, you know. I all of course I still listen to the people that have um you know, that I've admired all my life, but a lot of younger guys. I mean, I'm a huge Ariana Grande fan, for example. I listen to her, or um, I'll listen to, uh, do you know Christine and the Queens? Sure, I mean, yeah. Uh, she's an incredible performer and I love her. Um, I listen to some of my friends, um, whether they're Greeks or, you know, um, international um, artists. Um, what else? Um, I like traditional music a lot. I love exploring traditional uh, music from various countries, um, whether it's song, traditional French songs or English songs or Irish songs or stuff in the, uh, from the Middle East. Um, I like exploring different sounds. So you like music as well that represents the various cultures and regions. So Irish music representing Ireland, Greek music, French music, Italian which is terrific. Um, I think there's a depth to traditional music um, that is, I don't know how to call it, but it's, um, there's a reason why traditional music has, um, you know, survived through the centuries is because the, the harmonies and the melodies and, the, and the, the lyrics of all these songs are, they have a simplicity to them that is necessary to uh, the human nature. Beautifully said. That is so true. And it's the simplicity sometimes, you know, with all the technical, the technical mumbo jumbo that's in a lot of music that's auto tuned and everything else. Uh, when you get music that is speaks authentically, um, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, Katarina says also Celine Dion. Didn't you see her oh. right before the <laughs> pandemic started? <laughs> yes, because actually Andrea, um, her mom, took me uh, to Celine's show right before the pandemic. Uh, it was actually the last show I saw. And yes, Celine was also one of my favorite singers. Celine, the, uh, have you met her? Have you had a chance to yes, meet her? Yes, I met her once. Yes, I met her in, in Paris a few oh, years ago. Very nice. We got another great shot. Now, look at this. Oh, uh, that's from the uh, um, Herodes Atticus Theater in Athens. Mm -hmm. I mean, that looks that looks like a sold out situation. What was the actual? Uh, yeah. Tell me more about the performance. Yeah, it was an incredible show. It was the show we shared with Mario. Yeah, uh, with our special guests, and it was a very. It was my second time playing at that theater, but um, I remember uh, minutes before I was to go up on stage, um, uh, my my makeup artist was doing my makeup, and I couldn't stop. I started crying, mm. but I was literally sobbing with tears going through and she was like uh george uh yeah. make you don't need to panic but you're on in five minutes and i cannot do your face 
And considering that we're filming this show, yeah, I think it would be, now would be a, a, a good time for you to stop crying so that I can do your makeup. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, I've never been as nervous as I was on that night. How many people were there, you think? I mean, it looks totally. Uh, four, four and a half thousand people. 4,500. Wow. Uh, how long was the event? Uh, I think two and a half hours. It's, uh, you know, I can see why it moved you to uh, Tears of Joy. It's breathtaking just to even see just from the photo itself, George. I mean. You know, when you think of, of all the people who have stepped foot on that stage. Yeah. From uh, obviously everyone 2,000 years ago um, up to Maria Callas, to Elton John, to Sting, to Diana Ross, to Nana Muscuri, to uh, Placido Domingo, to Jose Carreras. I mean, the greatest legends on earth um, have stepped foot on that stage. So the fact that you know I was, I was lucky enough uh, to 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 step on that stage is, it's you know it's it's really important to me. It's something that I'll never forget, and hopefully I'll be up there soon again. Well, you were on another platform where a lot of sports legends have been. Tell us about this. This is unreal. Oh, that was Madison Square Garden. Um, that was uh, at a New York Knicks game. I can't remember what the other team was. Um, and I was given the incredible honor of performing the, uh, the, uh, the American National Anthem um, for that show, for two shows. I, I did it two shows in, in, in a row. First night was the, uh, the basketball game, and the next one was the Rangers game. And, um, you know, it was so humbling and I felt so proud that the fact that a foreign country chose me to sing the anthem and I and from what I was told uh, by the guys there who produced the, the shows um, I'm one of a very very few non-American artists who um, have been given that honor to sing the, uh, the anthem you know you're right absolutely you are right that is uh, very, very rare, and I'm sure extraordinary. What were you feeling when you grabbed that mic and started singing the American National Anthem at Madison Square Garden in New York City, televised, people in the stands? I was terrified. Uh, I was terrified. First of all, it was a very special show because it was a, a charity show. I can't remember... Um, what it was for, but you know, it was televised. It was it was a big event, sure. and um, I remember that my great. First of all, I remember the uh, how breathtaking it was to see twenty four thousand people all around me, and then yeah. you know, there's a thing about the American anthem has, um, um, uh, you know, it's it's a very tricky anthem because if you miss the the key that you're supposed to sing it, you're 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 done. You're you're in deep trouble because it has very high notes and very low notes. It's difficult. Uh, very difficult. I remember walking to uh, get to the point. Someone was walking me, and they were talking to my ear and told them. And you know, I was trying to focus. I said, "Please don't talk in my ear right now. I I cannot lose the key." And I remember that someone um, uh, whistled. And it was a completely different key and threw me off key. And I freaked out. I panicked. I thought, that's the end of me. I'm going to be, oh my God, 24,000 people, which means 48,000 eyes are going to make fun of me within a matter of seconds. But it turns out it was a beautiful uh, moment. I managed to sing it. Uh, and, you know, it was a lot of fun. And I, I felt, you know, the fact that a, a foreign country um, even though I call it my second home because New York is my second home. I spend a lot of time there and I consider America to be my country as well. Um, I felt deeply grateful and humbled um, that I was being given, um, you know, that extreme honor to sing the, the anthem. And it, what it does too is, especially, you know, the fact that it's a sporting event, it mm -hmm. opens up. Uh, a whole new, you know, grouping of potential fans to hear your voice and to hear who, who might not have discovered you previously. Uh, and you know, it's very funny because that night, actually, um, uh, 
a classmate of mine from Greece was at the show. <laughs> and he couldn't believe his ears that I was there. And he told me like a year later, I, I saw him by chance. He, he came to one of my shows in Greece and he goes to me, you know what? I was there. We suddenly saw your name and your face on the screen and heard your voice and we could not believe it was you. <laughs> 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 what a treat and what a surprise for them, I'm sure. Man. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, tell us about this. Uh, that was a very uh, precious show. Um, that was at the opening of the new uh, opera house here in Athens, because we have we've had a new opera house for the last, I think, four or five years or something. And um, I was uh, I had the honor and the chance to to sing music for Manos Khadzidakis, the incredible composer I was telling you before, who is um, considered our greatest composer. He's our national treasure, and I was the first pop singer to sing in the opera, at the opera house. Um, so it was a great honor for me uh, to be there and to sing uh, that music. It's it's um, a very very uh, important moment in my life. Yeah, mm, that's incredible. Great, great, great shot too. Again, you've had several uh, moments that have been uh, extraordinary. I love this shot too. <laughs> ah, uh, that's with Alkistis Protopsalti. Alkistis is a great Greek singer. She's also, um, you know, a national treasure here in Greece. And uh, we did a tour a few years ago together, and that's a little uh, shot from where we were dancing. It was really cool. Where were you? What was the location? Uh, I think that's in, I think, um, that's probably in Athens, actually. Mm. Really cool. A lot of happiness in that shot, too. And look at the crowd, too. I mean, everybody seems to be having a good yeah. time. And <laughs> no brooding there, just happiness and smiles. Absolutely. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. How about this one? Oh, uh, that's Stefan Mocchio. Um, for those of you who don't know him, Stefan is a, an accomplished composer, a great composer. He, um, um, well, first of all, he composed A New Day Has Come for um, Celine Dion. Mm -hmm. He also wrote the music um, for the uh, Winter Olympics, uh, the Vancouver 2010 Winter Olympics. He's written songs for, you know, Miley Cyrus and Sia and uh, Celine, obviously. He wrote songs for Fifty Shades of Grey. He's an incredible composer. And he actually composed uh, the duet I did with uh, Lara on my French record. Oh yeah. Uh, he also composed another song for me in my English record. He's someone I love dearly, and he's a great, great, great composer. Mm, it's great when you get a chance to collaborate with extraordinary uh, artists as well, and composers, arrangers. Another right. great shot. Where was this? Uh, that's from the Athens, um, uh, from the Acropolis show. The show we did the Acropolis a few years ago. Very nice. I mean, and that that's fantastic. I love this shot too. <laughs> That's one of my favorite shots. I don't know why. Um, probably because it's the only time I wore a, a tux with my uh, with a bow tie. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of bow ties. And yeah. I certainly do not love to sing with a bow tie on. So uh, I love that photo. Have you had to do it on different occasions where they want the bow tie? Yeah, a couple of times. And then I said, I'm not doing it again. That's it. If yep. you like my voice, you'll have to hear it without a bow, bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> And that is that. That's funny. Um, here's another shot here. Oh, that's from Lena. I love that photo. It's from my rehearsal. Um, I don't know why. I love the... There's something about this photo that I really love. It's And it's from a show we did this summer together. And um, I was having a really good time. And um, yeah, it shows the chemistry we have. I love Ooh. that photo. You know, what's nice about it too, probably, is that it is more of a candid situation. It's not a yeah. posed, posed and structured yeah. photo. It's a candid it's moment right. with you guys. So when it's a candid moment, sometimes it can be a little bit more uh, relaxing and you're not having to strive for anything. You're just, just enjoying each other's company. And that could be some of the most beautiful moments as well. Um, this is a great one too. I think it's from the cover, right? Yeah, that's the cover of my uh, of my latest record, of my Greek record. Uh, it was just released um, in end of June, I believe. And congratulations! You know, I'm I'm very happy because that um, record spent six weeks 
uh, at the top of the charts. It was number three in the charts, but in reality it was number one because it was number one in local records, in Greek records. The other two were um, American ones. So, um, uh, you know, I was very proud that this record uh, did so well and people loved it and, you know, they've embraced it and they love the songs. So, Tell us about it too. I mean, congratulations on that, doing it uh, during this time. Um, what was the inspiration for this particular album and how is this, what is the title of the album and how is the album different than maybe other things you've done previously, George? Well, this record, first of all, it's called Stathera Staonira, which means um, be steady towards, walk steadily towards your dreams. Um, and, you know, it's a very special record for me, first of all, because it's the first time that I'm doing um, a record with one composer and one lyricist. Um, so, you know, it's more like a, it's a whole uh, um, of, as we say in French, it's a whole spectrum of, of, of songs. Um, it's a story from with a beginning, a middle and an end. Um, it's, it was also my comeback to Greek original songs because I hadn't done a record of Greek original songs in more than 10 years because, you know, I was doing, I had my French record and my English records and um, I did the record with Mario with covers in Greek. So it was the first time that I got to do a record of original material. So um, it, it has a very special place in my heart. And the fact that people loved it so much and embraced it uh, means a lot to me. It really means the world to me. Are there places where you haven't performed yet, George, that are sort of on your bucket list? Oh boy, I would love to perform at that venue. I'd like to be on yeah. that stage. There's what quite are a there? lot. Are there? Yeah, I mean, um, for sure, uh, the Albert Hall in London is a venue that I would love to do. Um, the Olympia in Paris, which is one of the most legendary um, venues in the world. Carnegie Hall, I would love to do Carnegie Hall. No. Um, oh, there's a lot, my God, the list is endless. The list is endless. Australia, uh, Sydney Opera House, have you done that? Yeah, the op I would have loved to do the Opera House, for sure, for sure. Uh, there's many, 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 many venues. Um, Our friend Rita is here, Rita Mazella. She's tuning in and watching. Hey, Rita, happy Saturday, Jim and George. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, New York City, Brooklyn, New York in the house. Um, Christos saying, yes, all the songs of that CD are beautiful. Loving, loves that CD. Um, how long does it take for, on average? Like, it depends on the situation. It depends on what you're going for. And I imagine with everybody, it's different. But for you, mm -hmm. from the moment of conception to the moment of completion mm -hmm. how long does it take for you to create an album some people it takes years for them to yeah. have that album the way they want it some people can bang an album out you know in three months how is it for you what's the process for people watching who aren't familiar with how that process works what's the process actually like for you george it depends on the record and what i want to do i mean for example my first english record um, you know, I, I didn't want to write the record. I didn't want to write any songs. So we just picked songs from great songwriters and it, it actually went quite fast. And I was actually a lot, under a lot of pressure from the record deal, from the record label to finish the record. They were like constantly, you know, banging on the door, making sure it was working. So we did it. We worked with, uh, Molly Kay, who's my manager and my, uh, A&R person at the time we worked super fast and we got it done in like six or eight months the second um, album i wanted to co-write all the songs of the record uh music and lyrics and that took me almost two years to do uh, you know it was a different project now for my new record my new english record that i'm about to release in a few months um it's been relatively um fast we're, we're doing okay i'm actually happy <laughs> That's perfect. Can't say more. <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll have her back when it's released. Um, are there people too, George, that you would like to uh, duet with, collaborate oh with? God. Do not get me started. You, I'll probably need four hours just name dropping. 
Is there are other a couple that are there that are really near and dear to your heart that you're like, oh, it would be so wonderful? Oh, so many, so many. Celine, for sure. sure. Um, yeah. Uh, there's a Spanish singer called Pablo Alboran that I would love to do a duet with. There's um, Christina the Queen, uh, Christina the Queens that I adore. I would love to do something with her. Um, Ariana, Celine, there's so many. The list is endless, endless, endless. What about other styles of music? Have you thought of toying with other genres of music and stepping out into other genres as well? Oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, I think it's um, uh, it's a responsibility of an artist to expand into different territories. You cannot always do the same stuff. You have to um, experiment and you have to look for you know different ways of expressing yourself. What uh, genres do you like? Do you like jazz? Do you like other? I love jazz. I love jazz. I love yeah. you know the American Songbook. I love, um, like I said before, traditional music. Um, right now, um, I'm exploring a lot the uh, the traditional sounds from my country, from Greece, and that's why that uh, last record we were talking about is influenced by that a lot, as well as my new English record um, has that influence. Um, I would love to try some uh, rock eventually or some Latin stuff. I love Latin music. Um, it's There's too many things I want to do. Mm. Rita sang uh, great English album, lovely. George mm -hmm. sings uh, beautiful as well, which is nice. And she also mentioned, you mentioned Tina Arena before. So lucky to sing with uh, Tina, love her music as, as well. Oh. Yeah, that's a great that's a great opportunity to have the collaborations with people in that way, you know. Um, the other thing too, which we haven't emphasized as much, is as much a singer, a songwriter. Mm -hmm. Tell us about songwriting in that process and what that's like for you. And and do you would you call yourself a singer that happens to write songs or a songwriter who happens to sing? Some people have different okay. views on that. How do you describe right. it? You. I am a singer for sure. I'm a singer. Uh, then I am a producer because I produce everything I do, whether it's my TV shows or my records or my shows, um, because that's a full time job as well. It's a tough job, that one, I can tell you that. Tell me about uh, it. <laughs> and then I am a songwriter. Um, I mean, songwriting comes to me when I have inspiration, and then I might gather stuff around and, you know, have a concept in my brain, which was what I had for my previous record, um, who I meant to be, it was a specific concept in my, in my brain. Um, and I had specific stories that I wanted to, to, to say and share with my audience. Um, that does not happen all the time. You know, I'm taking a break from it right now. Um, but who knows, maybe next year or in two years, I'll, I'll write some new songs again. But yeah, I'm definitely a singer. That's my job. What are some of the things that inspire you to perform and to write music, um, George. Uh, obviously, I would imagine you're quite the observer of life. Are there different things that inspire you? We had um, Melissa Manchester was on, and I've re referenced this before, and she was she was nothing short of brilliant and yeah. loving and warm. She mentioned that when she gets an idea for a song, if some aha moment pops up for her, she has to immediately, and it could be, you know, waking up out of a dream, or it could just be something that she observes, a trigger moment. She has to run right to the piano. She has to get her cassette recorder going, and she has to start playing, and she has to start mm -hmm. recording it. Because if she, the longer she waits to do that, and the further she gets away from that aha brainstorm moment of creativity, it starts to fade, it starts to diminish, just, you start to lose the essence of it. So she needs to run right to the piano and start doing something and recording it and getting it there and then you know tweaking it, fine tuning it there. How about you, when you get an idea, when you get a spark, when something ignites for you, do you have to go right to get it captured and before yeah. it disappears? To me, it always starts with the lyrics. But for some reason, the music never comes first. It's always the lyrics, it's always the, the story. So I'll, I'll jolt it down, I'll write it down. Um, and then, you know, on my phone, on my um, uh, notes, I have, you know, 
hundreds and hundreds of ideas and stories, or sometimes it will be just a line um, that, you know, at some point I will turn into um, a song. Mm. So it takes time, but uh, you're always rewriting and rewriting and rewriting a little bit, you think? Yeah, you know, it depends on, because I'm, I'm a very disciplined person. I'm yeah. someone um, who um, um, cannot function outside of discipline. So, you know, um, I'll write my ideas down and then I may, I'll, I'll forget them for two years. But when the time comes and I decide that it's time to do a record of my material, then, you know, I'll sit down in my office every single day and write down. And I don't care if it's useless because it might be useless at the end of the day, but the, the discipline of working mm. will create uh, and will bring the uh, satisfaction at the end. So um, I constantly write down things that, you know, I just keep them in a vault somewhere and the right time will come. But when it comes, then I'm, you know, very structured um, uh, when I work. When you look at your career from that little boy onward, um, is it where you want it to be? I'm sure the, the extraordinary experiences you've had when you look back and review in this time that we've had these many months is a good time to look back. Uh, are you pleased? And uh, have you, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, of course I am. Because, you know, even though I always, um, you know, I always dreamt of having an international career of singing in many languages and countries and all that stuff, you know, a dream is just a dream. It, 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 you know, sometimes it's very silent and, you know, you may follow it because you want to follow it, but you don't know where it's, what, what's going to happen. So I can tell you that I'm very proud because I went to places where I never thought um, I'd go. You know, I, I would have never imagined that I'd sing at Madison Square Garden or that I'd um, play with Michel Legrand or that I'd play with Lara uh, or Mario, you know, all these people, you know, that my people would love my records and my songs. So, you know, um, I've sung to, I don't know how many countries. So I'm, I'm happy. That doesn't mean that I have, that I don't have more goals because trust me, I do. And I do want to go to more places. Um, but uh, there's a part of me that's very, um, that's actually learning how to be satisfied and proud of what I've done because I was not up until a few months ago. I'm learning to accept it and to be uh, at peace with it. Which is terrific. It's really been a learning experience the last several months for you, huh? What, what are some for other- all of us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, really. It really, really has. I think there's different aspects of our lives that we are discovering, if not rediscovering and maybe reigniting. Is there anything that because of the busyness of the career, George, you weren't able to do that you've been able to do now as a result of more time. You mentioned, you know, being able to, you know, reflect on a few other aspects of your life. Are there any other things that you've been able to do that you've always wanted to continue doing or, you know, take a stab at that you haven't been able to because um, of the busyness of the career? Now you can. Well, I spent quite some time with the people that I love. And, right. you know, even if we were not close, uh, just being on the phone with them uh, was important. Um, I spent many, many hours cleaning. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm, I've cleaned. <laughs> oh, you have no idea. I'm, I'm, um, I'm, uh, how do you call that? Um, uh, hysterical as far as cleaning is concerned. I have a thing for it, you know. Some of my friends call me Mr. Um, sponge Guy because I'm always with a sponge uh, cleaning after a mess or something. Um, um, you know, but I, I got the time. I, I, the most important thing was that I had the time for once to... Um, I allowed myself to spend time on myself, which I hadn't done the years before, because it was always about, you know, doing recording, singing, going to one place to another, you know, and life like we all do. And I made myself to stop and devote some time to me, to me um, 
but deeply within me, you know? And that's why I, I like I told you before, um, I kept uh, my psychoanalysis, uh, my therapy, uh, going in a very disciplined way so that I would actually make myself, uh, you know, discover who this person is. Because I had, because also what happened is that um, I was coming off of a, a, a very um, traumatic experience for me. Um, I went through a crisis, which I think that a lot of artists go through it. Uh, there comes a point when you lose uh, the connection with yourself, with what you are, with with how you feel. You, it's like what I always say is that you know I could see my house; it was right in front of me, but I didn't have the keys to get in. Um, and that was because you know I was, I was taken on a trajectory where, um, you know, I was bullied and and humiliated by a lot of people in in our industry, um, um, and that had a. Um, and that had an effect on me. It had a cost on me, and um, it hurt me in more than one ways that I I didn't realize it at first. It took me a long time to realize it. So, you know, I I I took the time to sit down and and see what happened and how to make it better. And and I'm glad I did. I'm really glad I did. That's fantastic. And that's very um, special that you shared that with us because there might be folks watching right now, George, who are going through a similar experience. And it doesn't have to be necessarily, you know, being a performer in uh, the music industry. It could be in any aspect of life. What it's fascinating that you were talking about this because a lot of people are experiencing this now and as they reevaluate their lives. What are one or two things that you have discovered that might help somebody watching us right now live or later on demand in the archives when they watch the show later that you could share that you think would be helpful for somebody else who feels like they have also gone through some of those experiences that you have that you never had a chance to really focus on and deal with, but now that there's been this time, you've been able to say, okay, that didn't work for me. That's enough. I'm, I'm going to do what I need to do and what fulfills mm -hmm. me and fills my heart and soul. What would you say? Well, to the say? first thing was that um, I needed to learn how to stop comparing myself to others. I wasted a lot, a lot of time um, comparing me to others, to what had, what, you know, the people around me were doing. And that's what, from the beginning, made me lose my own path. Because when you, because the thing is, from my insecurity, um, I kept trying to be liked by everyone, you know? And when you try to be liked by everyone, you do not know how to say no. And at some point that reaches a point where you just lose track of yourself. So, yeah. um, you know, I learn how to like myself and be fine with it. Right. Um, so that was one thing. And that's and not always thing, so easy to do. To master that is not always so easy. You know, you never, I don't think that you ever master it. It's a constant, it's a work that needs constant room. Um, uh, you need to, be, to remind yourself to do it constantly. True. Um, but also, you know, um, and what I think is um, a fact for everyone on this planet is that we are much, much stronger than what we think we are, you know? Um, so, you know, humanity has gone through some, is going through some very dark times. Yes. Um, and I'm not talking just about COVID, no. uh, which is the obvious thing, but um, if you look at what's been happening, happening around the world in the last four or five years, um, we are uh, peddling through some shoddy waters here around the world, you know, whether it's, your president um, and a whole bunch of other political figures around the world, um, whether it's the financial crisis that has struck the whole of Europe, you know, it's um, it's not easy. It hasn't been, it hasn't been easy for anyone. Mm -hmm. So you know, I think that we're making it through. We find a way of dealing with it, of fighting it, and that means that we're way way stronger than what we think. We actually are. 
And sometimes it takes some valleys that we have to go through in life to be able to get to the top of the mountain. And, you know, it takes time and it takes uh, realization and that understanding of, you know, why things happen and that we also can't control everything. Like when we're, you no. know, just starting out in our teens and maybe early 20s, whatever, we think we can control everything and everything might be perfect and we're always chasing yeah brass ring. And then we realize that life can really come at us in so many different directions. And it's how we react to it and how we treat it and how we treat others. That really is what matters most, right? And I think that kindness is the key. You know, if you pay attention to it, kindness is abundant. We have it everywhere next to us. We don't pay attention to it. And that's all it takes. Yeah. It's just a little bit of kindness. We can all show kindness and understanding and um uh you know i don't like the word tolerance uh even though we use it a lot but i don't i really dislike this word because tolerance in reality means that you know i don't like what you're saying but i will tolerate it and i don't like the meaning of that um it's what derogatory I, it's derogatory yeah um so what i believe in is in kindness in understanding in 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 having the um, the willing to listen to what the other person has to say, and right. to accepting that you know we can all we cannot all be the same. We can't. We have different opinions, different colors uh, of, of our skin, different um, uh, political um, positionings, or anything. You name it. We're we all different, yet we all smile and cry the same way. Mm -hmm. You know so. And we, we need to be equal. So at some right. point, we do have to accept that, you know, we have to be kind to each other. And, you know, look at what's happening around us. Around us, We don't have the time anymore to um, neglect the people around us. We just, we don't have the luxury of the time to do that. We can't afford to uh, not be kind to each other. We just can't. We can't. You know, it's about time we learned uh, that lesson. You're right, because uh, as I was saying, we all bleed red, every single one of us, you know, we all put pants on one leg at a time. I mean, there's we're much more alike than we are different. And the differences that exist are fantastic. I mean, they can be beautiful things. So I've said um, multiple times on this show, I've said it on air in my work in television radio, I've said it to family, friends and colleagues. Um, I'm hoping that with everything that we've experienced through the last many months and now going into the new year, some of it's still continuing, that we, we don't return to, quote, normal people saying oh i want to go back to normal yeah. and everything exact the way it was i said and i'll say it again on the show that i think a couple of things might have happened whether they really happened who knows but i'm thinking that a few things might have happened back last late winter early spring and that is that a couple of energies came together the divine mother mm -hmm. nature and planet earth and they all came together they're three major powerful energies and they said look stop everybody stop knock it off we don't we gave you life we gave you this beautiful planet we gave you the opportunity to live a wonderful life and you are you're screwing it up you're you're not taking care of the planet you're not taking care of each other uh everybody the, the violence the hatred the divisiveness it's all going in the wrong direction. Yeah. Like you said, everybody, you know, just stuck on social media, watching what everybody else is doing. All of this is not what we designed this to be. We need to be together. We need to have compassion, care for one another. So divine mother nature and earth came together and said, stop enough. Yeah. We're going to throw a few major things at you, a pandemic, economic crisis, political unrest, and civil societal yeah. upheaval. Right. And any one of those individually would be enough for anybody to have to deal with. But we're going to do it all together. And we're going to do it all at the start 
of a new decade, which is usually a decade yeah. change where there's hope. And we want to see what you do. Are you going to be worse for it? Or are you going to be better for it? Are you going to come together or are you going to tear each other apart? We have seen um, all of the above. We have it's seen for the best though. I mean, we are seeing that people are coming together. Uh, change is happening. So, you know, I, I agree with you. I don't want to go back to normal. I want the new normal. I want better, right. Uh, I want the new nor normal, which will have nothing to do, which will not prioritize profit over humans. Mm -hmm. Right, right, exactly. I've said that I hope you come back more empathetic, more compassionate, kinder, um, and that we listen to each other more because everybody has a voice, everybody has self-worth, everybody has value. And I think everybody's been going into their own little cliques and only surrounding themselves with the voices that reinforce what they believe. But when you open up your heart and your mind and your hand to others, it can be a beautiful thing. And that's what I'm, I'm hoping, you know, that we come out of this, everybody comes out of this closer, more empathetic, more compassionate, and we listen to each other more you know, um, we will, we will. Yeah. And, and, and though we already, are. we already are. Yeah. And, and this show, this series was sort of born out of some of that desire through inspiration and positivity, uh, light, lev levity, love, levity to, you know, inspire some of that. And you do that through the work and the music as well. And, um, you. you know, it's, it's very important and it's a, it's an interesting time in all of our lives and something that um, I think we're all learning from. What are a few things you've learned from all of this? Oh, it's like what we said before. Um, the other thing I noticed was one day when I was in New York, um, that was back in May. Um, one day I went down my building and I started walking around and I noticed that all the trees have, had bloomed. And I thought to myself, you know what? Pandemic or no pandemic, financial crisis or no financial crisis, political crisis, or you name it, the whole world might be in catastrophe, yet nature moves on. The mm -hmm. trees will bloom and uh, the, the, the birds will sing. So, you know, we move on. Right, exactly, exactly. Um, have you been inspired by any of this um, musically as far as yes. material that might be forthcoming as a result? I of have, and that's why I'm recording a new record, uh, which will be released in a few months. Uh, and it includes songs of, of unity yeah. and songs of, um, I call it the healing project. I want this, I want this record to be like a, I want this record to be like a detox smoothie. You drink it and you feel um you feel good you feel serene um so it has some covers some very well-known songs and some original songs um and i cannot wait to share it with everyone it's gonna have it's gonna be a multilingual album it's gonna have songs in english but also in <laughs> french and spanish uh and greek i think it's gonna have a little bit of everything well, we'll have to have you come back and maybe we can share some of that. A couple of people asked, uh, is George going to sing or is there any music as we're having? Uh, a <laughs> there it is. He just did. Uh, don't you like that? Uh, tone? Don't you like that tone? <laughs> well, if anybody has a birthday, we can sing happy birthday to you. We actually do that on the show. If somebody has a birthday, we'll sing them. Oh, uh, really? Happy birthday. So if anybody has a birthday, we can, we can do that. Birthdays today. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, I agree with what Maria says here. We have to listen. We have to listen to our hearts. That's really, really important. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and uh, and Jennifer Barry, who's watching in Allentown, Pennsylvania. I'm so happy I came to Jim's show. I'm thankful to Jim to give me a second chance to experience Jim guest and love it. He's thank you, Jim. Aww. My pleasure, uh, Jennifer. I know you're here. You're here all the time, and you're Zen. She asked actually earlier in the show, she always tends to ask our guests, what is, what would be a Zen place? If you had a choice between, um, it's the sea, it's always the sea for me. She, hers is either, she says the sea, the ocean or the mountains. She's in Pennsylvania where there's the oh, mountains. I love Pennsylvania. I've been there 
twice, I think, or maybe three times. I had a great time. Uh, actually, a friend of mine owns a cabin there, and I, and I went on holidays. It was gorgeous in the middle of nowhere. Um, but to me, it's the sea. I spent hours um, swimming, listening to the sea, watching it, observing it, uh, looking for shells. Um, it's the sea. Me too. The, the ocean is uh, love the mountains and love uh, other areas. I, I drove alone through uh, after a television shoot in Las Vegas. I drove alone, which was really amazing and actually life changing. I drove alone through Death Valley in August in 120 degree weather. Wow. Uh, and it was, I really, if you want to get in touch with yourself and reliance on yourself and just liberating in so many different ways, doing something like that where it's desert, where you don't have the Zen place of the ocean. You don't have beautiful skyscrapers and city atmosphere, and you don't have um, the mountains and the, the beautiful forests who have stripped mm -hmm. earth and it's just you and raw earth and anything can happen and all of that. It was really cool. It was really amazing. And, uh, wow. that was, a that was about a year and a half ago. And it wasn't something that I had planned. I just had the rental car and I just drove in and it was wonderful, very life changing. You get really in touch with yourself when you're forced to not have nice. all the voices around and, and all these other distractions. You can really quiet is important. Quiet is the, the most important thing. What do you do to relax? What do you do to quiet your mind? What do you do to, to, to relax and breathe deeply when you need to, my friend. I cook a lot. Cooking um, helps me uh, focus and you know detach myself from everything that's happening around me. I meditate sometimes. Um, listening to music does that to me because I cannot um, I cannot listen to music um, as a background. I'll never you know you you won't meet, see me doing chores around the house listening to music. I can't do that because. I'll stop, um, and I won't do. I, I won't get anything done because as soon as I listen to something interesting, I'll stop and listen. So, listening to music for me allows me to. It's almost like a meditation uh, process. And of course, like you mentioned, the ocean, uh, the yeah. ocean as well. One of our uh, lovely viewers here, Kathy Short, who is in Cleveland, Ohio, said that. Um, her birthday, her birthday was in December, and we had a couple of days off for uh, our holiday. Oh, happy birthday, Kathy. Do we do we want to both sing her happy birthday a cappella for the happy, happy birthday? birthday to you? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kathy. Happy birthday to you. You, there you go, Kathy. You had George Paris right there live in Athens, me here in the States, sing you happy birthday. Better, it was December, I guess, but that you're going to float with that for the, uh, all the way. It works. <laughs> yeah, you're going to float with that all the way till next December. Um, what is a typical day like for you? Uh, I know that's a crazy question considering there's nothing typical about anything going on now, but generally, what is a typical George day like? Certain routines, certain things you like to do? I can't describe you a normal day right now because it's, you know, I contemplate whether I'll go from the kitchen to the living room and from the living room to my bathroom or I'll go back to the bedroom. <laughs> or, you know, if I'm going to go back to the kitchen and then from to bathroom number two, you know, that's all I have to do now. <laughs> yeah. But usually um, it depends on um, it depends on what uh, on what kind of a period I am. If I'm on tour, that means that I, you know, I'll wake up early in the morning. I'll have a um, breakfast. Then I don't speak at all. Um, I keep my mouth shut. I answer my emails. I'll read a book. Um, and then little by little after 1 p.m. and lunch, I'll get ready to, you know, I'll go in, into show mode, which means, you know, going to the th I always go to the theater very early. I like to be there like three to four hours before the show to make sure that everything is right and, you know, do my warm up and my sound check and then the show and the meet and greet. Um, if I'm not in that period, um, then I usually wake up early. I'm one of these few singers who wake up early. Um, I don't wake up at noon or something. Um, I wake up early. Um, I'll do some chores around the house. 
And then usually I'll have meetings back to back or, you know, I'll be locked up in a studio, um, you know, uh, working for hours and hours and hours. And then at some point, um, you know, what I love to do is uh, what we traditionally do here in Greece on Sundays, you know, I cook and I have a whole bunch of friends um, coming over and, um, you know, we'll all sit around the table and laugh like there's no tomorrow and a meal will last for like six hours. Um, which we can't do right now, but I'm hoping that very soon we'll be able to do. Mm, I love that. I love that. And that, when I was in Sampataki, that is one thing that I noticed, and it's uh, very uniquely Greek, is um, the fact that coming together and surrounding with food mm. and music is really very big and part of the culture. Um, and, and is so revered within the culture, right? And, and you celebrate that. It's a key element in Greek culture for us to be together. Togetherness is very important. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, how do you prepare when, when you're getting ready to perform, whether you're going into the studio, and, and the two preparations might be a little bit different depending on the scenario. When you're getting ready to go into the studio to record, or getting ready to go on stage and perform live in front of you know a good sized group of people, what are the preparations like for you? And that could even start. I mean, not necessarily preparations as far as working with the crew and everybody. What do you do to center yourself to get the voice ready, uh, whether it's the day before, or the day uh, of? And you I, do. To be honest with you, I'm not. I don't do much in the sense that because I have. Um, a very disciplined way of life. I'm not someone who parties hard every night. I, you know, I'm not the uh, sex, drugs, and rock and roll kind of type. Um, you know, my life is very strict and very disciplined. I don't need to do uh, much more uh, to get ready for a show or for the studio. Um, usually, you know, in the past few years, um, in the past, I used to like to have like to be alone in my dressing room, and I didn't want people around. And the older I get, uh, and the more at ease I feel with myself, I like to have friends um, coming around in my dressing room. Sometimes, you know, it'll be a fellow singer, um, and that, you know, um, you know, when Mario comes knocking on my door to say, "Or oh, Alkis is when it's a show in Greece," or some of my friends, and they knock on the door and say, "Hi, I'm here. Have a, you know, break a leg." You know, it always um, it gives you joy. Um, um, other than that, you know, because I have my singing lessons, uh, you know, very often and all that stuff, um, the only thing I pay attention to is what I eat, what I drink, uh, sleep. Sleep is very important to me. I have to sleep a good eight hours sleep. Um, and I don't talk. Mm. Uh, I keep my mouth shut. I think that's the secret. Mm. <laughs> mm. And you try to keep your thoughts clear too, right? Because like you say... If you have, if you're trying to study a note, and you hear some other noise and other sounds that can get into your head, well, when I'm working for a show, I forget about all of that. You do. You know, that's that's the job I have to do months before I go on stage. Mm -hmm. Once we're on a train and we're on tour, I all of this is in my soul, in my body. I don't need to go back to it. It's it it's it's there, and I need to trust that it's there. I only need to do the technical part, which is to make sure the vocal cords are, you know, nice and trained and clean, that, you know, I, I haven't eaten or drunk something weird, and, um, and I'm, that I'm as healthy as possible. You know, that's all I need to do. And then, because I know for a fact that, you know, I'll be very nervous before I show, you know, my, I'll have, my stomach is going to be up and down, and I'm going to be, I can be, um, sometimes I can also be, not rude, but what happens is that, you know, Minutes before I go on stage, I, I become a little aggressive only because I'm so I'm panicking. It's the pressure. You know, yeah. It's the pressure. And then I just have to trust that once I go on stage, I've prepared myself, I've worked for months, and I have to let go so that I can give myself to my audience a hundred percent. And I can't be thinking of, you know, whether this note or that word or that note or that song. I have to forget about all that and trust that the music knows better than I do. 
You know, sometimes they say that um, the most pleasurable experiences are the ones where you just let it flow. You just let it happen. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I've experienced that in some of my work too. If I get too hyper about every duck being in a row and everything being exact, like for example, you know, we've done trips where we've planned a trip and everything is, you know, sort of rigid. Everything has got to be here then, got to be there then. And enjoyed it. But then the next time we've actually gone to the same place. It, it was actually a cruise to Bermuda twice. The first time we just went and had a fabulous time. It was actually through a radio station. It was a cruise with gym masters and listeners. And it was this whole thing. My folks came, friends, everybody came. It was beautiful because we just went and explored Bermuda as we were exploring it. The second time this travel agency approached me and they wanted to do something similar, but everything was timed. Everything was like the minute we got off the cruise ship, we had to be here. Then we had to be there. Then we had to be there. Yeah. Then and people didn't enjoy it as much as when it was just exploring. So a lot of times I'll tease people because they'll get in the car with me and depending on the time of the year, we'll just take the car and just drive. And people in the car, family, friends will say, where are we headed? Where are we going? What's I'm like, who knows? Who, you know, yeah. I have no idea. So that way there, it's an experience that I'm having and they're having collectively. And none of us knows where we're going and none of us knows where, you know, who yeah. meets and what we're going to experience. And we've done this where we've driven from New York through Connecticut, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, all mm -hmm. in the same day, stopping mm -hmm. off at little places, little cafes, uh, you know, beautiful fall. Yeah, fall. that's the fun of it. That's and just fun. letting go and just and just experiencing it and doing it. Um, not that you don't you have know. that luxury, trust me, when you're on tour, you do not have that luxury. Oh. There's someone on top of your head saying, uh, you have another three <laughs> interviews, and then you have a meet and greet, and then you have this and that and that, and then you have the show, and then you so you know, you there's you don't have the luxury for that. <laughs> yeah, and what's that like for you for folks who are not uh I've had that conversation with some of my other uh fellow friends who are artists. Uh, some love the touring, some don't love the touring. Uh, they love studio. I adore it. Do you love the touring? I adore it. It's the reason why I'm a singer, to be on stage and to exchange that energy with my audience. Mm -hmm. um, I adore it. I mean, right now, I wish I had, I don't know, a hundred city tour ahead of me. I wish I had that. When I it, and I miss it so much. I sure. really miss it a lot. Now, when uh, everything struck in like, you know, April, March, COVID and all, a lot of people have said to me, oh my God, 2020 was going to be my year. I had all these things booked, had all these big plans. It was going to be an extraordinary year. Um, Cuneo was on, Michael Cuneo from Under the Street Lamp. He was on in the summer. Sean Wiley was on as well from Under the Street Lamp. And Cuneo had said that um, he had worked so hard almost all his life for this particular year of 2020 to be a tremendous year for him. And then the world stopped for him. Yeah. Um, was it similar to you? Did you have a lot of things that were set, ready to go, booked, mm -hmm. you know, and then things just... Well, a lot of things were canceled or shows, um, you know, a lot of promotional stuff were canceled. Um, but on the other hand, you know, I am... A extremely grateful to this year. I know it, it sounds like it, even almost entitled to say it, but you know, I'm very grateful to this year. First of all, because I was able to do that show at the ancient temple that you saw. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, I forgot to tell you, even though I shouldn't because I'm disclosing secrets, but anyways, uh, Mario and Evanthea were my very special guests. So it allowed me to sing with Mario again after uh, five years because we hadn't sung together. Okay. Um, so the fact that you know I was able to do um, that historic concert, um, just that alone, um, you know, um, makes up for the all the ugliness of 2020, and also because of the, of the fact that you know I allowed myself to to take the time off to um, visit things that were not right or felt wrong. Um, so you know, even though a lot we canceled, yeah, we canceled so many shows, um, but and so many, you know, I had to record and do stuff and travel, 
and everything was canceled. And you know, even though I was sad, um, I'm I'm actually grateful for 2020. I think at, it, at in the end, it it brings great stuff. You know, beautifully said, my friend. I have found aspects of this particular time period that have been. Uh, reinvigorating and rebooting as well. And I know a lot of people have said that they have for themselves as well. And uh, I think being positive is one of those things. I've always been that way anyway, but being positive, I think about everything um, and realizing that this is a, uh, it's a learning experience, everything we've yeah. done. We've had time to uh, assess, you know, our lives and our, and ourselves in ways that maybe allows us to go a little deeper than we would have had time to with all the busyness of what our career yeah. demand, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, of course, for sure. Mm. What are some hobbies that you like to do, my friend, that keep you sort of sane and keep you connected as well? I know you mentioned the ocean, loving the ocean. Yeah, it's the ocean, it's cooking, it's um, What's your hiking. Specialty uh, in the kitchen. Walking. I don't have a specialty. I always believe that. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, people who cook a lot do not have special foods. It's only because they cook a lot of stuff. You know, when cooking is part of your everyday life, right? You don't really have a, a specialty. I don't. I really like to mix and combine Greek um, uh, cuisine with French cuisine, and I I do both of them. Um, no, I don't have anything special. I just cook a lot, um, and I love to have big feasts and have people eating. I'm like a big mama bear, you know, feeding yeah. everyone, going around. And, Have you tried this? Eat this, eat that, eat that. Um, you know, um, what else? Um, I like to read. Yeah. There are times where I don't read. I can spend months without reading a book and then um, I'll get and read 10 books in a row. Mm. Um, what else? Music and that's it, I think. Do, uh, um, any I have a very uh, quiet, like no, I, I exercise. I um, meditate. I'm a private trainer, um, and I and I work out three times a week, right. and that's it. And which, which is more than enough because trust me, it's a nightmare. It is a nightmare for me. I'm not enjoying it. <laughs> I do it? not you enjoy it. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> um, he's doing it for the benefit of all of you. Um, uh, do you meditate at all? Do you take time for yourself and just go? Yeah, not very often um, because the process of making music for me is like meditation. So I don't, but you know, um, every once in a while I will. Mm. Um, oh, and shopping, shopping helps. What kind Unless of? Unless it's clothes for work, that I hate. <laughs> but, uh, I shop any little gadget you can possibly find. Anything technological that comes out there, I have it. You name it, I have it. I spend so much money on buying stupid little gadgets. I mean, if there was a gadget for, I don't know, lifting your little pinky in a different way, I'd buy it. I'm a, oh, I'm a so, sucker for gadgets. So where do you have room to store it all? <laughs> do you have a warehouse? Well, usually what I do is that I buy and then I give it out to my friends. I, I expand. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> gift, gift. I share the love. How was, speaking of that, how were your holidays? Uh, I know obviously we weren't, none of us really were able to get together with everybody like yeah. we normally would. My family's, my mother is the youngest of 16. So wow. on my mother's side, it's a big family and my father's 16. side, wow. she's the, the youngest of 16. I know it's amazing, but not everybody was Who able to. your grandmother? I know, and there's only 20 years difference between my mother, the youngest, and the oldest, Gertrude. Wow. Um, it's a, it's quite amazing, The but not everybody was able to uh, get together, obviously, because of the holidays. How did yeah. you, uh, how are your holidays? Very quiet, uh, with just uh, two friends here at the house, uh, not doing much. You know, we all had our tests beforehand to make sure everyone was safe. You know, we all got tested and we had a very quiet evening. Um, to be honest with you, I was not in the mood to um, uh, Sorry, celebrate me. a lot, you know, with what's happening. And it's also one of the reasons why, um, you know, um, I don't post too many photos lately. You know, I don't take selfies. I mean, I'm not in a mood to, um, with everything that's happening, I'm, I'm being a little more 
introvert is the right word. I was on the mood to, you know, for a huge feast. It, right, exactly. More of a quieter time to reflect yeah. on on things, which uh, is very, very important, you know? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. What are some other things that you would like to do, my friend, that you haven't done um, in your career that are on the George bucket list, dreams of yours in your life's journey going forward? Well, um, I'd love to have a family, non-work related, but I, I would love to have kids. And at some point I will have kids that I know for a fact. Um, I'd love to learn how to fly. Um, I, cause I fly my drones. I have a thing with the drones and I fly them, but I think I want to get a, um, a pilot's degree. Um, mm, so, yeah. yeah. Cause I have a uh, tremendous, uh, obsession with planes. And as far as work is concerned, my God, the list is endless. I have so many projects that I want to, uh, to do that I want to accomplish, whether it's records, songs, tours. Um, I want to help younger artists. Um, in fact, actually this year I'm going to be, um, um, producing, co-producing the record of a young, uh, Greek singer that I really admire. Um, so, you know, I want to get to all that sort of, it, it's endless. There's so many things that I want to do around music. The, the list is too long to, to name. What would you say? Right now, sorry, the only thing that I really want is yeah. to go on tour. I want to go out there and sing for each and every one of you. I've, I've missed it. Like yeah. there's no tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I, I interrupted you. You were saying? I don't doubt that. I, I was going to say that, and that's beautifully said, George. Um, uh, as far as what you would say, like you mentioned a little bit of as far as inspiring others, other young minds, um, mm -hmm. do you like doing that? And what would you say to somebody watching right now, whether they're watching live or they watch this later on demand on our Gym Masters TV YouTube channel? what would you say to somebody who's considering going into the type of work that you've had an opportunity to go into, into entertainment, into music, singing, songwriting, performance, the creative arts, what would you say to somebody who's coming up, maybe they're a young kid or a teenager right now, mm -hmm. and, you know, cause obviously mm -hmm. the business has changed. The industry has changed over the years. You've experienced it all from different aspects, the business side, the performance side. You know, the, the industry, like you said, has changed a lot. Um, mainly because, if you want my opinion, because the industry has created and sold this, um, um, how should I call it? It, it, it sold a, like a very simple business uh, template that tells everyone you can be a star without doing anything um, and and sold it to everyone. And that's why we have so many of these TV shows where someone can become a superstar within 10 minutes and then three days later, nobody remembers their name. Um, so, you know, I think that that's very reckless. So what I would tell a young kid is, you know, if you really love it and if at the end of the day, it doesn't make a difference whether you sing for 20 people or 20,000 people, then do it. Do it, give it all your heart, all your existence into it. And most likely you will sing for 20,000 people one day. If your goal and the reason why you wanna do this is because you wanna see your letters in your name in big red letters somewhere or on the cover of a magazine, then, you know, I'd say be very careful because you know, you may get your name on a cover of that magazine, but once that magazine doesn't want you anymore, you'll be so miserable that, you know, there won't be, um, it'll be very hard to, um, to balance your life without it, you know, because yeah. if you really care for it and you really love it, it, you know, your art will always be a, a constant a uh, reminder of who you are and not of who you're not, you know? And that will be the force that will, you know, drive you to, to go to where you want to go. Um, and also, I will tell them what Mario told me 10 years ago, 15 years ago. 
uh, when the, the day I met him, which was what, because I was completely lost and troubled. And it was actually one of the, the pieces of advice that were the, the most valuable to me. He told me, you will not listen to me. You will not listen to your label. You will not listen to your agent. You will not listen to your manager or your family or your friends. You will look straight in the mirror, look at yourself and decide what it is that you want to do. Because you're the only person who knows better than anyone else uh, what's right for you, you know? And sometimes, um, especially in this industry where, you know, um, the problem with the industry is that instead of the whole thing being about how you expand your art it, and, you know, it, uh, and uh, growing your craft, it's all about what has succeeded and how we're going to repeat this. So, you know, if you don't know very well who you are and what you want to do, and sometimes you have to go up against everyone else uh, in the room, you know, you have to um, yeah. be very adamant about what you want. You have to be ready to fight for that. And in order to do that, it, it, the, the lens of your uh, art has to be crystal clear and it's not easy and it's not even possible to have it when you're 19 years old it takes time at least it took time for me i mean there are other people i guess um where it was easier for them at a younger age but you know it's it's a constant process and you have to trust it and you have to work towards it and um not always listen to all those other voices that will come in and tell you, you should be this way, you should do that, you should do that, yeah. or copy that, or you have to trust your own voice, your own inner voice, yeah. right? Exactly, exactly. Is that something you've had to learn over time to be able to do, to trust? I learned it the hard way. Trust me, I learned it the hard way. I really did because, you know, I, I um, because I didn't have the, the um, um, the strength within me to to impose what I wanted to do. I was very um, um, influenced by people who shouldn't have influenced me. Or to put it in another in another way, I should not have allowed myself to be influenced uh, by other people. So I learned the hard way that it's not easy to trust the inner voice. But once you do, you never regret it. Even if at the end it's a failure or something that others will consider a failure, um, you know you've done the right thing at the end of the day. That's a wonderful sage advice for somebody that might be watching who's being inspired by our conversation, George, who might uh, be considering going in the uh, the industries. Uh, what are some of the things you love about it? The the work that you do. Oh my God, everything. You know, I wanted to sing so badly ever since I was a kid that you know I considered a huge privilege that I I get to do this job that I have a fan base that you know traveled the world. So I enjoy every studio session, every rehearsal, every sound check, every concert, every interview, every photo shoot, even things that could get boring at some point. I enjoy them. I enjoy every single little thing because it brings me to my people. It brings me close to, to um, uh, the people who are mine because I consider them mine. Um, and it allows me to, to do what I love the most for them. Um, and the other thing that I love when I find it, because it's not easy to find it, is worth work ethic. Yeah. Um, to me, work ethic is one of the most important things. And uh, when it exists, and it's very easy to um, acknowledge it when you see it, um, I really cherish it. That's really, really important. It's beautifully said, yeah. my friend. It's uh, work ethic is numero uno for me too. And I, I relate to with that. And it's, it's important because there's so many distractions and so many yeah. roads you can go down, which are not necessarily and so many temptations and things that look great, 
but yeah. then turn out not to be. And you see where other people have gone down those roads and it didn't really work out too well for them. So you're, you're staying true to yourself and that's reflected in your music. I mean, I've seen you perform. Uh, we've known each other for a good number of years now and you're all in, you're, you're giving, you know, your heart, you're striving you. for the perfection and the excellence coming together <laughs> because you really want to, you're as much as you're providing this enjoyment any of us that are in these creative arts, we're trying to provide enjoyment and inspiration for others. It's also very cathartic and therapeutic. The energy, the love, the inspiration we put out that other people gravitate towards and are uplifted by and comforted by, we are experiencing that as we're doing this work at the same time. When you're in the studio, when you're on stage, when you're meeting and greeting people, it's it can be a therapeutic very positive experience for you it is. It's sure for sure it is of course i mean that's what that's the reason why i became an artist because i wanted to love and be loved i needed to be loved you know exactly and uh and, and that's a beautiful thing and uh maria here says just some of the wonderful comments that people have been uh typing away here from around the world. So well said, George. Really inspiring wow. advice to aspiring Thank artists. Um, Rita says, George, what languages do you enjoy singing in French or Greek or Spanish, et cetera? You, you do it all. Um, I love them all because they all have something. I mean, I truly believe that a language does not limit an emotion. It can't do it. And I've witnessed it. You know, I've sung in French for Americans and English to Russians and Greek to all over the world, you know, and I know for a fact, I am the proof that, you know, music and language is not a limitation. It cannot mm -hmm. limit what you transcend to the audience. Um, I enjoy all of them. I mean, Greek obviously has that little extra something for me only because it's my, um, it's my first language along with French. Your native Eastern tongue, yeah. Are, yeah, they're, they're both native for me because I spoke both of them at the same time. Right. Um, so these two, um, they have a special thing for me, but at the other hand, on the other hand, you know, I started speaking English when I was three years old, four, so it was very natural to me. And Spanish is a language I learned later on, uh, you know, when I was 18, but I love it and I enjoy it as well. Mm. Want to say something in Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> no need to. <laughs> you have the best, I love this. Alice says, you have the very best master, and that's Mario. I wish you two would come to Switzerland for a concert. A beautiful combination. I love that. <laughs> have you been to Switzerland? Have you uh, performed in Switzerland? I have, yes. I have. Yeah. Years ago. With Lara, actually. With Lara. That's a, it's a, it's a beautiful country. It really, really is. And wonderful yes, people. So yes. when you look back at everything from this little boy to uh -huh. now, yeah, yeah, it really is a cute shot. When when you look back at everything and all that you've done thus far and all the people and all the experiences, George, even Kermit the Frog, um, what are some of the things that come to mind for you? Uh, obviously, you're a very, you and I are similar that we tend to be introspective and deep, yet we are in careers that uh, demand the um, extemporaneous um, and, you know, vivacious reaction to life. Um, when you look at all of this, what comes to mind and all the people and all the things that you've had an opportunity to do and are still doing, that's the key, still doing, still immersed I'm in. I'm happy that I fought for my dream. I'm, I'm, and I'm happy that I somehow subconsciously accepted that I had a big dream and that I had to work to make it happen. And thank God, you know, um, I've had the chance to encounter some incredible people and in incredible stages and, and to, to sing in some incredible places. So I'm, I'm grateful for music. I'm grateful that music found me when I was a kid and it became my only way into this life and I'm grateful for all the gifts 
it brought me in above all for the fact that it 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 gave me freedom it gave me the freedom to be who i am it gave me the chance to stand on my on on my two feet um and little by little it liberated me from from the the worries of my past so mm -hmm. above all i'm grateful to music for what it has offered me mm. for what she has offered me and the people you've met and the people you've worked with and even meeting you know when you meet somebody who comes up to you, and i love when this happens with me too you may have somebody who's been following you for a long time who mm -hmm. never really expressed anything but then one day there was something you did something you said something you performed whatever it may be that really touch them and they finally come up to you and say i you know i've been following for years and i just need to tell you how much you inspire me how much your work means to me well that's the good thing about social media and you that's the reason why i always make a point of reading i can't always read all the messages that i get because there's a lot of them but i do my best and um you know it may, it may take me three months to read a message but i will um, and you know, um, I'm very grateful for the connection I have with my fans because it's a very personal connection. They know that, and I know that. Um, we have a very special and close bond, um, uh, and that's why in Greek I would say "idikimu," which means uh, "my people." They're my people, <laughs> and I'm sure they feel the same way about you, my friend. I'm sure they do, oh. and. Uh, and again, uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. They know where your heart is. And uh, the times that we've all had together, I look forward to us gathering and uh, celebrating. Here's many more in the future. Yeah, you know, when you surround yourself, whether it's family, friends, colleagues, or all of the above, when you surround yourself with great people, and you and I have had some great times, Mario, um more to come more to come professionally and and personally um we look forward to it and staying in touch is a beautiful thing and staying connected is a beautiful thing and um and it's been you know just glorious and uh i wish you well my friend i know and we're getting some wonderful comments here uh i love you george and oh, good i love george. you too yes stay grounded uh <laughs> My God, sweet little boy. So just looking at the picture. Oh, I don't think you'd call me a, a little boy. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, probably. Uh, I'm guessing she's she's in love with that shot. <laughs> uh, maybe, yeah, probably. <laughs> <That'll>, uh, <laughs> but, Thank uh, you, everyone. Thank yeah. you for the love. And I love you with all my heart. And I can't wait for us to um, all be back together soon and to do shows. And I can't wait to see you all again. Tina Tin says, hey, my friend, thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. And um, I hope we'll get to do this again soon and we'll go to a show together and we'll meet uh, when I'm in New York. Absolutely, my friend. Uh, Tina Tin says, I love your voice. And uh, Maya says, you are unique. Um, this has been a real pleasure, George. I just want to say, you and I, you and I have truly uh, had an opportunity to you know, stay in contact. And that's a very beautiful thing. And you're over in Greece and I'm here in the States, yet we've stayed in contact in ways that I think are unique, uh, especially with it having been a professional experience first, and then now a personal friendship, which yeah. is very, very meaningful. Um, I'm very grateful for that. Very grateful for that. My friend, I am too. Uh, Michelle says, amazing show, Jim. Lovely interview with great topics. George, thank you for sharing with us, uh, wow. sharing you with us on this winter's day. Stay well and be safe. And even the George Paris fans are here. Oh, my thank fans, you. my beautiful fans. Thank you for this wonderful oh, conversation. Photos. I don't know where they find them. I don't even have them. I, I'm always gobsmacked from the stuff they found, from the stuff they find. So, you know, thank it's, you. It's huh. quite amazing, isn't it? Um, yeah. Thank you for this wonderful conversation and for keeping us company, sending much love to you. You're thank very you. welcome. Uh, wow, we've been together for three hours. Oh, my God. That's like Mario, I know, and, and others. 
Gary, who's a big fan in Iowa, he's a viewer of our show, but he's a fan of yours as well. George, thank you for um, so much for spending your evening with us. Willie in Holland, still with us. Thank you for your stories. George, Mary Bishop in Florida. Thank you so much, George. You take care. We have a lot of levity on this show as you've experienced. Aww. Jennifer in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Thank you, George, for spending time with us. Slancha, which is the Irish toast and salute. Uh, Christo, yeah. what a wonderful evening because of you and Jim, George. Many thanks. Be well, Christiane and Maria. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So happy to see you all here. Much love. And Anne in Southern California, one of our regular Loverty viewers. We love her. What a wonderful guest. I'm a new fan. Fabulous. Aww. And Welcome. So, um, Welcome now, you, now you can tell us what that one says. Oh, I have no idea. That's, uh, that's a, I don't know what language that is. Mm. That's... Um, I don't know that. I don't know what that, what that is. is, but we thank you. I'm sure we see a tulip there. I like the rose. Yeah, thank you. Many hugs to you as well, Maria. We can't hug uh, in person, but we can send virtual hugs to one and all. I am hugging each and every one of you. Each and every one of you. Big, big, big hug. And Perfect. thank you, Jim, and congratulations on your show. Because what are you doing every single day? Doing. Not one show, but more than one show a day. It's incredible. So kudos to you, my friend. Well, I certainly Thank hope you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. And I'm so glad you're able to pop on and give us, you know, this amount of time. Next time we come on, we don't have to chat this long, but it was nice catching up and it was nice, yeah. you know, sharing and and stay in touch if you have new things, new music. Like I say to all the guests, because many of the guests always say, oh, when can I come back? When can I come back? You're welcome. The door is always open for you, my friend. Oh, I'm sorry. I just saw a message from Eleni. Eleni is a very, very special fan of mine. It's someone I love very much. I really love her. Thank you. We Appreciate love it. you. Smiles from Maria. Uh, George. Hi, Maria. I love you all. Safe. Love you all. Um, Jim, thank you too for the great conversation. My pleasure. Uh, we got hearts coming in. Uh, Ann, uh, Jim is amazing. Thank you, Ann. I appreciate that. Christine Clifton, who's in North Carolina, USA. Uh, George, thanks for everything you shared in today's conversation and such lovely photos as well. Plus all your words mm -hmm. of wisdom from both you and Jim. You have uh, special moments on and off stage. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. And uh, Merlin in Ontario, Canada. And Merlin, I know you asked about music. Next time he comes on, maybe we'll have a song or so. So you hang <laughs> there. You, hang you never know. You never know. You never. We did happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And of course, you can find him online. What is your website? GeorgeParis.com. Perfect. So oh, folks, but bear with me because we have a new site. Coming you're updating up. it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We're changing the whole thing. Thank you, George. Been listening to every word, love, and that's uh, Merlin in Ontario, Canada. And uh, thank you very much, Jim Masters, for this wonderful interview. Good night from Athens as well. You as well. And Tina Tin, amazing show, Jim. Thank you. Sending much love to you. Those of you who joined us for the first time, I encourage you to watch. We're on every day. We actually have another show coming up in three hours live, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Tomorrow, Nathan Carter is going to be with us live from Ireland, um, another great friend. And uh, you can see all 235 episodes of the Gym Masters Show live on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. And I hope you guys will uh, subscribe to the channel. We would love that. We would love that. Um, thank you, Ann. I appreciate that. Uh, Jim is amazing. In, uh, Good night, everyone. Southern thank you so California. much. Yeah. You're the best, my friend. I hope the show um, met whatever expectations that you had and that you enjoyed the time with me. As I had a wonderful time. A wonderful time. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. And Kathy says, thanks Thank for the birthday too. song, too. <laughs> uh -huh. My pleasure. I want to toast you. I want to just raise my glass to Here you, you go. and say thank you, George. Dear friend. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. See you, you soon. Stay happy. Stay well, be safe, Thank you, my friend. and we'll you you will see you again soon, okay? Big hug. Bye. Bye-bye now. Wonderful friend, wonderful talent, George Paris here on the Gym Masters Show Live. And uh, Gary asks the uh, new, I think they're working on that, so... Uh, we'll have him sing the next time. I'd asked him if he was going to sing, and uh, not on this particular episode. He felt more like chatting and catching up and having a conversation, which was really a pleasure. 
Thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoyed the show. And uh, if this is your first time watching the Gym Masters show live, we are here um, seven days a week live. And uh, that's absolutely amazing. We're going to be back in about three hours. We have another extraordinary guest coming up. Uh, he is amazing. He's all excited. He's going to perform live. So we got a lot of music coming up tonight. This is Grammy-winning composer, pianist, and musician, John Prue. He's going to be live here from the United States coming up at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific tonight, Saturday night. So I'm going to grab some dinner and, you know, rest a little bit, and then I'll be back. Believe it or not, we have a second show live tonight on the Gym Master Show Live with our very special guest, John Prue. He's a Grammy-winning composer, musician, pianist. He's going to play several songs live on the air, so lots of music coming up. This is another extraordinary guest. We're very happy about that. And tomorrow, live from Europe, I'm not sure if he's going to be in England or Ireland, but another dear friend of our show, Ireland's leading country music singer Nathan Carter is tomorrow, Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, 8 p.m. in Ireland, Scotland, England, the Netherlands, as well as Spain and Italy. And it'll be 3 p.m. here in the United States on the East Coast. It'll be noon on the West Coast. And uh, Nathan is all excited. Nathan Carter, that's going to be exclusively on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. So make sure you join us tomorrow as well. So tonight we're back at 7 p.m. Eastern for uh, a fabulous guest, Grammy-winning composer and pianist, John Prue. He's going to be here live. want to let you know also Rebecca Harkin is going to be joining us. She is the uh, sister of Keith Harkin, of course, who was originally with Celtic Thunder. She's joining us in just about uh, a week and a half live from Australia. That's right. She's a brilliant singer, songwriter, and performer in her own right. She's going to be here with us. Next weekend, award-winning actor, singer, songwriter, Sam Harris is going to be with us here exclusively on the Gym Masters show live. That's right. Also, Nikita Burstin, he's a wonderful singer and actor and dancer, originally from Russia, uh, well, his family is, his family is, he grew up in San Francisco and now he's in the New York area. He's amazing. And, uh, he's been in a lot of off Broadway productions and so much more. And he's a brilliant talent. We also have dream analyst and author Patricia Eltinge. If you want to have your dreams analyzed, uh, join us uh, next Friday, because that's going to be an incredible show live. And she's going to take uh, viewer requests. So that's uh, coming up uh, this Friday on the Gym Master Show Live. Award-winning dream analyst and author Patricia Eltridge is going to be uh, joining us here on the show. We have so many guests from the television series Happy Days. We have Anson Williams joining us here on the show. Very popular sitcom, Happy Days. And of course, he's been in so many other productions. I mention all the time on our show, don't forget to smile. Make sure you smile and share your smile with others. That's a beautiful thing to do. Don't forget to share the lovity. And don't forget to find your Zen place. George said he loves the ocean. So do I. I grew up here in the Northeastern United States on the coast, the East Coast, and I love the ocean. The ocean calls to me, swimming, surfing, kiteboarding, boogie boarding, sailing, walking along the ocean. I love the ocean. And we live here actually right by the ocean. We're very blessed here in the United States in the Northeast part between New York and Boston. So the ocean, the ultimate, like George was saying for me too, is the ultimate Zen place is with loving family and friends. That's number one. And then my work in music, my work in television and radio, uh, writing and producing tennis. I love uh, hiking and cycling. I'm a cyclist, love all of that as well. And the ocean. So the ocean for me is my one of my great Zen places. You actually have to drag me out of the ocean. Um, and George had mentioned that as well. He loves the sea. He loves the ocean, which is really, really important. And of course, my 
work in television and radio and stage as a host and presenter, journalist, actor, all the things I do in this industry uh, of media and broadcast, I love very much and I've always loved. That's one of my Zen happy places as well. George said he's very, George said he's very Zen and happy when he's in the studio, when he's performing on stage. Same thing with me. We're similar as far as creative people when I'm doing my thing in television and on radio and on stage and, and also joining all of you on the Jim Masters Show Live. This is also one of my beautiful Zen places. I love it. And uh, we always tell everybody, make sure that you relax. We say this on every show. Make sure you relax, love one another, take care of one another, breathe, breathe from the diaphragm. Uh, it's been a very inspiring conversation today with my uh, dear friend George, hasn't it? Maybe you had an opportunity to learn things about him that you didn't know previously and gave you a, uh, a new appreciation of who he is, the man as well as the performer. And we always have these inspiring conversations on the show. Sometimes we do have the entertainment, the music, and performance. This time on this particular show, we went a little bit deeper with conversation and I thought that was terrific. And when he comes back next, we'll have him maybe sing a song or two. But always relax as much as you can. Love one another and love yourself. Be sure to take care of yourself. Not just during these times when it's crazy and you know there's a lot of uh, unthinkable things happening, but every day. And share your inspiration. Share your positivity. Share your levity, as we say here on the show, with the world and with others. It's a very beautiful thing to do. And something I've always done and something that we encourage you to do as well. If you've been watching this show and you're not going through a very happy time right now in your life, well, continue to watch the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. This series has been born out of my uh, years on television and radio and multimedia and stage and all. And uh, I hope that it's bringing some peace and solace, enjoyment. Uh, you're always learning something new on our show. You're always being entertained. And inspiring conversations on our talk show. So I hope this show, these series of shows, or 230 plus shows, you're enjoying. You, If you missed anything, if you'd like to see this episode with my great friend, singer and songwriter, recording artist George Paris, uh, if you'd like to see this episode again and you share it with others, you can. Everything is there for you on our YouTube channel at Jim Masters TV. And we'd love it if you subscribe to the channel that helps the channel. And don't forget to uh, click the notification bell that you see so that way you don't miss any of the extraordinary content that we put on the channel. I say hello to everybody watching on the YouTube channel right now. We thank you for joining us all over the world. We're going to be back in just a couple of hours at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific with another wonderful guest and lots of live music. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook at Gym Masters TV, Instagram at Gym Masters TV, uh, Twitter at Gym Masters TV, also on Periscope and Twitch at Gym Masters TV. George is on all of those social media outlets as well. So I hope that uh, you'll say hello on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, I respond and love to say hello to you as well. And uh, all the episodes are there. And we certainly hope you enjoyed this episode. It was really a pleasure having my friend George here on the show. And we were teasing earlier when we were looking at the childhood photos, George as a child, that uh, in a way there's George and there's me. We almost could have been cousins <laughs> in some way. Uh, happy smiles. Uh, and um, you got to love life, right? We appreciate George being here on the show. And, um, uh, good friend. And again, uh, a great talent and uh, so many great experiences. And again, if you're just joining us, we've known each other for a while. There we are with Mario. I'm in the middle, George, Mario there. Good times, great experiences. There we are. Uh, Andrea's with us and uh, Angelos and Zach and Mario and George and everybody. This is in New York City. For those of you joining us late, more great times together and uh, great experiences. We've all, there's our friend Tammy McCann, who we love. This was a CD signing for her. And uh, we were all celebrating each other and good times. There's Tammy and Mario, George is on the left, I'm on the upper right and good times, good people. 
So from wherever you're watching, I know it's late for some of you uh, watching in Europe right now. Uh, in Greece, uh, it's quite late right now. We thank you for joining us and we hope you'll join us again. I'll be back in just a couple of hours. Uh, if you miss anything, you can see all of these shows archived again on our YouTube channel. Let's take a look at some of the comments that have come in. We always like to, I like, I'm very viewer centric. Like George says, he feels that he's one with his audience. I feel this very same thing with my uh, audience uh, that watches me on television, listens to me on radio, sees me on stage, watches this series of shows as well. Thank you very much, Anne. We will see you soon. We'll be back at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific with uh, Grammy-winning composer, uh, John Pru, who's going to perform live. Uh, thank you as well, Christine. It was beautiful to have you here. Um, oh, finish. So that uh, when George and I were trying to decipher what one of those uh, folks said, it was finish. Very nice. Very nice. From Finland. You're very welcome, Maria. Thank you very much. And Jennifer, thank you as well. We love having you here on the show. And um, thank you very much, Jim Masters, for this wonderful interview. Good night from Athens. Thank you very much. And Tina Tin, amazing show, Jim. Thank you so much. Love to you. You as well. Yes, Finnish. So that was Finnish from Finland. We love that. And um, mm, beautiful words, beautiful words. George, I'm so thankful for that hanging out with you. Uh, Jen is Zen. We know that. Be safe. Good night from Athens. We toast all of you as well, watching all around the world. If this is your first time here, we hope you'll come back and spread the word and tell everybody about the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. Uh, people asked me uh, if I was going to continue doing this or if I was just doing this now during COVID times and to try to lift people's spirits. But as long as you guys are there, uh, I will continue to do this. I blend this with my professional work in television and radio. And sometimes it gets very busy because we put a lot of production elements. There's a lot of uh, work behind the scenes to do all of these shows and to do them live like this. But it's a joy and a blessing and a pleasure. Uh, you have a wonderful evening as well. Bye, guys. Thanks again, Christiane. We will see you again. Gary, thanks, Jim, for the great conversation with George. My pleasure. Maria, thank you for your thoughtful questions, Jim. It's good to see you, Maria. I know you've been following me on uh, social media for years. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, thank you, Willie. Have a good meal. We sure will. Quite hungry. <laughs> we skipped through lunch. We didn't have lunch yet. Thanks so much, Jim. Now my birthday is complete. See you at seven. <clears throat> Enjoy your dinner. Yeah, George, it was a blessing that uh, George uh, joined me in singing you uh, happy birthday together. Uh, Kathy, we were away on holiday when your birthday came on December 28th. So now you had us sing it live just for you, Kathy, in Cleveland, Ohio. And it's my pleasure. And I know George enjoyed it as well. Hey, loveties. You got it. Um, see you soon for some more great conversation and a lot of music coming up tonight as well. 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Uh, inspiration is everything. You're right, my friend. Inspiration certainly is everything. Rita, and so glad you can join us uh, from Brooklyn, New York City. Love it, love it, love it. If you want inspiration, we're all about that. And hearts and nice. See you all later. It's a double lovety day on Jim Master's show live. You got it. Hopefully you guys are enjoying these shows. A lot of people binge watch the shows too. If they don't catch us live, they uh, watch these shows later on in the archives. And I love that. Sometimes I'll do that. I'll have it on in the background uh, because, you know, how George was talking about perfection and striving for perfection. And I say, you know, let's strive for that and excellence as well. I do the same thing. So sometimes I'll watch back our shows and I'll look at them and I'll uh, look at them at, from a keen eye to see what I can tweak, what we can do, what we can fine tune. And uh, every once in a while we do that. We've even recently fine tuned our set a little bit more. I wonder if anybody can see some of the little nuances that we've uh, done even since yesterday, a couple of different things we've done since yesterday. Always tweaking, always working. Uh, to provide enjoyment and inspiration to all. Thank you, Rita. And love Tina and Lara. Lara, 
I had an opportunity to interview her um, on public television. Beautiful, beautiful as well. Jim I. Jen is Zen. Fantastic, fantastic. And uh, yes, Kathleen, wonderful Kathleen in New York City. You can see this um, on the archives and we will be here tonight as well. Have a good meal from Willie. Thank you, everybody. This is your host, Jim Masters. Thanking you for your time this time. Till next time, we love all of you. Thank you for all the love, the support. Again, we thank our very special guest, uh, George Paris, for joining us live from Athens, Greece. Again, he's a wonderful friend. He's a great talent. And uh, now you've learned more about him or you discovered him for the very first time right here on our show. And again, a pleasure having him uh, as a friend and also as a guest here on the show. We love all of you. We will see you again at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific with Grammy-winning composer John Prue coming live. And then tomorrow, Nathan Carter is going to be here on YouTube at Jim Masters TV, 3 p.m. Eastern, New Pacific, 8 p.m. GMT. Take care, everybody. If you're with us for our next show at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, we love it. We'll see you then. If not, we'll catch you on the next one. This is your host, Jim Masters. We love all of you. You be well and stay safe. You take care. And thanks for joining us on this episode of the Jim Masters Show Live. We'll see you again soon. Love you all. Bye-bye.